Yes, All I right. Yep. Marky, here we are. <laughs> hey, Drew. We're, we're, we're going again. <laughs> All right, brother. <laughs> Thanks for being here. This uh, is Mark Fisher, a friend, uh, a very close friend. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, oh, man. It's yeah. our pleasure. We've been waiting a long time to get you here. Yeah, you've been threatening it for a while. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah it's here. awesome. Yeah, it's I mean, awesome. It's great. Hey, great. thanks for thanks for bringing the coffee. Oh, you're welcome. Love I love it. it. Good you Canadian know. coffee. You're I'm welcome. older, so don't don't uh, be disconcerted when I get up to go pee. That's <laughs> okay. <right. It's> <laughs> I won't do that to you. All right. I won't leave you alone. I know you're. I hold it. I, I your bladder's for, bigger than a walnut. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. I know. The hours. old man's getting old, you know. Days. They shrink. Yeah. All Whoa. right. Well, Mark. Hey, well, you know, we never did get that golf game finished. I know. Remember, we started and it got rained. Nine and... holes in and then it started. Yeah. 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 And, and we've and never gotten back well, to that. Are you still playing it. there? Uh, yeah, I am, except, um, you know, the hip's been bothering me a little bit. I just got right. checked out and orthopedic says I'm good to go, so maybe I'll just start stretching more than I am. <laughs> <laughs> that might be all it is. You know? But, uh, but yeah, no yeah. surgery. Yeah, we no got to surgery. That no, game. no, it's good. It's good. I mean, it's good and it's bad because, like I said to you, they did the surgery on the other side and it was, uh, it's perfect. You know, like you, you go from a low grade pain twenty four seven to no pain, and it's like you know. But the surgery itself was pretty tough, right? Yeah, the surgery is okay. I mean, you know, you got your rehab for a couple of months, but you know, yeah, after, yeah. After that, it was like it was it was. It was pretty quick. The oh, that's process. nice. Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking to myself, wow, if she could just slip a new one on the other side, <laughs> I'll be totally pain-free, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to have to keep taking narcotics or something, you know? So. Do they do ankles? <laughs> yeah, they do everything. They do ankles, shoulders, knee. Hips are the hips are the least invasive as far as uh, recovery. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, shoulders apparently the worst. What causes the hip to end up going uh, wear and tear wear and tear and for me uh, you know that my my background in 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 sports so hockey i was a goaltender you know that's what brought me to this area kitchener rangers i played for a couple of years and um i was a goaltender so for a good portion of my life from a time i was about uh 11 years old to the time i was about 30 years old i was in a crouch most mm. nights <laughs> and doing the splits and yeah yeah, yeah it's not so much the splits it's the it's the steady crouch all the wear and tear on my hip was at the front of the socket so i was bone on bone at the front the backs were perfectly normal but that's from being in the crouch matter of fact the orthopedic hmm. said to me were you a back catcher or were you a hockey goaltender no, no kidding. yeah i was blown away i said that's that's crazy i said I, I was a goaltender i said how'd you know she goes only two positions in sport where i see this um in an x-ray the wear, oh, the wear at the front, of the wear at the front of the socket. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Backside, she says your back, your um, hips, joints is is fine because all the weights on the front, all the weights the on grinding. the front end. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's what yeah. she said. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it was a she. Well, there you but, go. <laughs> <laughs> she did say. She did say. Uh, so yeah. So that was, um, <clears throat> you know, that was my background, and so. It's just as I've gotten older in life, my uh, yeah. Now I start feeling it. You know, I, I of course I I know you played hockey forever and right. you were a goaltender. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You're a big guy. Mm. Was there any net to shoot at? <laughs> yeah, too much sometimes. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess. Are hey? most goalies kind of wide or big, or do they have a certain? Uh... They are now, Andrew. That's a good question. Like you can see the evolution of goaltending in the uh, like if you're just taking the NHL for your for your. Um, your test is, you know, back in the day, I was a very big goaltender, very big. Uh, there was me and maybe Kenny Dryden that were over six foot tall. Wow. Um, then you had guys like uh, Chico Resch and other fellas like that. And before him, guys like Gump Worsley and that were like five foot seven, five foot eight, you know. Um, now the NHL, I would hasten to guess that probably the average height for a goaltender in the NHL is probably at least six foot. Really? Eh? And there's guys that are six six. I would six, imagine seven, they want to uh, cover as much of that net well, as possible. You know, and is that the deal? Is six, that what? Well, you know, it's like when they're down and got their legs spread out. I mean, they're covering bottom corners with their feet and their their pads. And obviously, if you're a tall guy, you got a long wingspan, so you know your blocker and your glove are, are a yeah, little bit wider yeah, to go. Never thought and, of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. seems right. Yeah, yeah, it seems right. You know. Like and the goal, the, the measurement for the net hasn't changed. 
So, yeah. you know, the bigger the goaltender, <laughs> bigger the goaltender. That's why they're always, there's always things every year about goalies' equipment. They don't want to get in too big because then uh, it's just not going to be any net. And, of course, fans don't want to see... Soccer-sized nets. They don't want, and they don't want to see one nothing games either. They mm-hmm. want to see oh, some, okay. they want to see see. some goals. You know, they want I mean, to see I some imagine over there. time that they've uh, put in place some kind of guidelines or rules with the sizes of players or with the... These things, they not, must. Not so much size of players, but equipment. Or something. Yeah, equipment. yeah, equipment. Yeah, that makes sense. Equipment, yeah. yeah equipment. Now, I I did a show, a TV show last year, and I read yeah. uh, this big hockey sequence. Yeah, yeah. So a buddy of mine, a stunt guy, his son is a hockey goalie. Mm-hmm. So I hired him to be my goalie in, in, on the show. And then I went over to him because we needed some forwards, like we needed some other mm-hmm. players. I said, hey, can you go strip off this stuff and get out there and be this? Mm-hmm. And he said... No, I've never played hockey. I'm only a goaltender. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and I that kind interesting. of interesting. I've I'm not, I've never been a massive hockey fan, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. But he's never played hockey out on the rink. No, he's Probably. only ever been a goaltender. I I've never understood that. Yeah, and I'd be the same way. I would have to tell you that, uh, you know, goaltenders were entirely different skates than forwards. So um, a forward skate is beveled. Um, um, either uh, for forwards, it's beveled more forward to give forward torque, forward um, uh, motion. Um, and uh, for defensive guys, D de- men, they're starting the bevel starting to come back because they're more on their heels, going um, backwards. Going oh. backwards. A goaltender skates are perfectly flat. This is the first I've ever heard this. Yeah, yeah and uh, and your skates were pearly white, right? Pearly white. <laughs> oh, no, they're black. <laughs> <laughs> Very old With those kangaroo picks in the leather front. cold. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, goaltender skates are, are flat um, for movement side to side. And um, are and they it, still like sharp on the edges and stuff? Yeah, yeah, they're sharp on the edges, not as sharp. Uh, and that's a preference for goaltenders. Some guys like them sharp. I didn't like mine particularly sharp. Um, huh. But uh, yeah, so for a guy like him and a guy like me, if you said go out and be a forward now, I would have to say to you, okay. In my case, I would say, okay, that's no problem as long as I can wear my goalie skates, because I wouldn't be able to stand up in in beveled skates. Oh, no kidding! Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're just too used to being on flat, and a goaltender's weight is on his hamstrings and on his his ass. I mean, he's sitting back in the front in, of his hip joints. Sitting on the front of his hip, he's sitting back in a crouch, you know, and he explodes out of that crouch. Whereas a forward, he's mostly always on a forward tilt, hips forward, shoulders forwards arms forward driving forward yeah you know? okay um, and obviously they want full momentum going forward momentum that's fascinating that's that is so fascinating their, so their equipment now bevels and that are as individual as how do i be like a you know a putter for a golfer right very individual okay very specific to him uh a, a guy's bevel or a guy's sharpness of his blade is well, one might be this next guy's this 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 okay so this is also fascinating Interesting. i've actually watched it's no big deal i guess to most people but i've watched guys in an arena mm. sharp sharpen skates mm-hmm. so now so each individual hockey player could yeah. talk to a really good sharpener dude that's the that that's the uh that's the thing there they'd have to be good i mean nhl guys that's their li- livelihood right be like you in the stunt business i right. mean you're you going to be you're gonna, equipment. You're, you're going to be looking at your ropes and things like this for any kind of yeah hundred percent one hundred percent all yeah, the time. Nothing used, nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Exactly, Drew. Um, you know, for 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 an NHL player, he's probably got a trainer or an equipment guy on that team that does his skates and nobody else touches them. You know, he's they've got it down. You know, oh, very, very yeah. cool. Tool of the trade, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's, that's, and, that's real, and when you're making some decent dough. And, <laughs> Yeah. You know, making a hell of a living. Yeah. You know, why would you hiccup yeah. on anything like that? Well, well I guy, guess it's... when a guy's b- blade breaks, you see him limp to the thing. Well, they go and get him another blade, but it's his blade. He, right. He's got blades that are pre-sharpened in a slot with his number on it, and they just pop the new blade in. Well, in the old days, you didn't have replaceable blades. That was you know, my next question because I've never heard of that either. You didn't have replaceable so blades. So give me my was... sneaker. So you can leave your skate on and pop a blade off and put another blade Absolutely, on? Absolutely, yeah. They're, wow. They're, yeah, they're in holders, right? That's there. like race car tires. Yeah, but in my day, yeah. you couldn't do that. If a guy busted a blade, you have to change your he skates. was done. He had to change his skates and get them sharpened um, 
to the way he wanted him if he didn't have an extra pair ready to go. Right. And in junior, a lot of guys didn't have extra pairs to go. They're they weren't finished. They couldn't put on another guy's skate because they wouldn't be able to skate in his belt. That's fascinating. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I just got Close called uh, uh, a couple months ago to do the Boris Salming story. Right. Uh, be- it's a co-production between Sweden and Canada. Yeah. And then I just found it two days ago. I didn't, they t- went to, with somebody else. Oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah. I was literally looking fuck forward that. to it, but yeah. Well, it's going to suck now. I just, I just finished um, writing a, a book, uh, my, as, I guess it's my memoirs, uh, my life in, in sports. But um, when I get to the hockey part of it, it, it's interesting for me where hockey led me. It didn't um, necessarily lead me to millions of dollars in an NHL career that spanned years or anything. You know, I had a cup of coffee there. But um, what it did lead to me to was... Um, you know, one day I found myself after university was done looking for a job, you know? Yeah. And I found myself in uh, police headquarters, um, big city police headquarters, and um, at their uh, human resources asking for a, um, an application. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, I'm filling out this application, and uh, – they're saying to me, well, you know, you can, by all means, fill it out. We're taking applications, but I got to tell you, there's hundreds and hundreds ahead of you, you know? So, you know, you got to have something that they're interested in. Right. Something is, well, what, what are they interested in? Well, <clears throat> hopefully my education, I'm thinking, because, you know, I got a degree from the University of Toronto, right? Um, no, it's a degree. It's a Bachelor of Arts. But back then, there wasn't a whole lot of guys with BAs even. I mean, it was a big deal at UNT University. Right? Yeah. And finished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and so I had that. So I'm thinking, well, hopefully that's good enough, you know. But then I get down to the part um, on the application where it says um, sports, activities, hobbies, uh, list and any awards. So, like, there's not enough space, oh, you know, that's what from, for me, right? Because yeah. I, you know, I played pro lacrosse and I played on the junior olympic basketball for for canada so i had i was a three sport guy Jeez, man so so you know it gets there so i start listening so <clears throat> i write down kitchen arrangers uh, goaltender the years that i played los angeles training camp the years that year i was there so i had this thing in i get a call the next day no no shit i get a call the next day from human resources well, we we need you uh, to come in uh, tomorrow, wear a shirt and tie, please, and um, and do a um, do an do an interview. I said, okay, that's that's. I think it, there was hundreds ahead of me. You know, <laughs> must be must <laughs> they, be my, my my degree in they his, were, must be my history degree. Or they were <laughs> busy all night long. <laughs> <laughs> must be my history degree. <laughs> so so I I get there. And I'm sitting in front of um, a superintendent, a deputy inspector, and the deputy chief of police. Huh? So I'm nervous. I'm sitting there across the table from them, and they, they, the, the, the deputy chief is doing the questions. Well, if you're hiring somebody to carry a gun and police the streets, you might want to do talk about background you might want to talk about family background not that you're not going to do your own investigation but you might want to talk about those things you might want to talk about you know get a you, feel for you, the guy yeah do you do drugs do you drink do you smoke do, right. you, do you you know like like who are you you know so but they sit down there and it says this the deputy chief says to me uh it says here on your application that you um you played golf for the kitchen rangers and i said yes sir he says uh well, we have a we have a police uh, hockey team here, and it plays every year in the international police uh, tournament, which is a big deal. Like you got to understand, this is like the Stanley Cup finals for policing in Canada and in northern United States. Like they come from all over to play in this tournament, and it's different locations across Canada every year. Anyway, so we have a team that plays <clears throat> in this in, <clears throat> every year. If you were a member of this police force. Uh, would you play for that team? I said, yes, yes, sir. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Yes, sir. He goes, Jesus. he goes, the chief, the chief here coaches the team. Wicked. I said, yes, sir. He says, okay, well, welcome aboard. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. 
Welcome aboard. You've got you got to go get fitted for uniforms and stuff this afternoon. So there's hundreds behind you. Uh, hundreds, apparently. <laughs> but <laughs> they're back there. But now. so so looking back on it, I mean, uh, I, I might not have ended up with a, a hockey career in the NHL, but it certainly got me a, a career. Yeah. You know, that, because that was definitely oh, that's what it, brilliant. Definitely what it was. And right? obviously, that's you a movie moment. To, mm. Like, you, what what brought you to the cop shop in the first place? Well, my 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 brother and my sister both cops. Ah, ah, yeah. okay. So you know, um, over the dinner table. Well, my sister had moved away by this time, but heard a lot of cop stories from my brother. Now he was just a cadet at the time, so he he wasn't on patrol or carrying a gun or anything. But he'd been there since he was eighteen. Um, it kind of fit up my alley being an athlete and, you know, being kind of a I don't know, man's man, you know, how you yeah. viewed kind of policing. That's how I've always fire. viewed you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Firefighters and that, you know, you, you kind of, kind of drawn to that kind of work. Right. But I didn't know what I was getting into certainly, but I mean, uh, yeah, I was hired like boom, right then. Like welcome aboard, like you said. And. The only three questions they asked me was about hockey. That's fascinating. Yeah. That's so, so they crazy, didn't have a goaltender. Man. Yeah. No, but see, this is right? clearly. So they went from having no goaltender to a guy that played major junior A in that and some NHL. So oh, it begs the question, how did the tournament turn out? Um, we didn't win it, but we were in the final. Yeah. Yeah. So I they mean, were pleased with oh, their yeah, choice. I mean, that's, yeah, that would, you know, that's, that's huge for, and they carry that. You know, it's in a trophy case there and all the rest of this. Love it. Know. Yeah, it's, a, you know, of course, when you get the chief, there's big eagles involved too, right? Oh, you know, there's bragging go. rights. You mean, you got 100%. You got huge eagles there. You got, you know, between chief. different police forces. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Can only imagine. You know, and, you know, you think that when you read articles about police forces doing joint operations and, uh, you know, um, and you think to yourself, oh, that, that's how it works. You know, every, they're all connected into one another uh i can tell you that nine times out of ten one police force hates another police force oh it, really it, yeah it's not a it's not a it's a fraternity but it's not a working fraternity what, what right. cause what causes what what's the uh the issue the animosity between, yeah um yeah, again you're dealing with uh, egos and you're dealing with that um that uh, bravado stuff uh it's uh, our police force is better. Uh, we're uh, you guys are a bit of lightweights. Uh, you know you uh, your chief's a lightweight. You know your, really, your yeah. morality bureaus. Why does why do they care? Uh, why do they care? Isn't good, isn't the force on an, in another city, another region doing another thing? Good question, Drew. Um, we're always trying to beat one another to the uh, to the pinch. Okay. You know, uh, you know if we've done a certain amount of legwork and a certain amount of intelligence on something. Okay. And uh, Calgary uh, police force ends up arresting the person. <laughs> oh, oh okay, in, I see. Because he's out in Calgary. And they haven't bothered to uh, correspond with oh, man. the other bureaus or the other policing that's done the investigations and stuff. So there's, <laughs> it, it, it gets very competitive. It's and, actually and, quite and, petty. And, it is petty. Yeah. And But but it, then it's it, it's propounded, then it's, then it's accentuated with things like International police tournament where you're out on ice beating each other's heads in, hating one another. Fascinating. To, to try and win a trophy, you know. Unbelievable, and man. Then, you know, you know, you look at your partner, the guy that works with you on the streets, as the guy that's got your back always. Not so much this guy from Buffalo. Or yeah. Th- or this guy from, you know. Yeah. Wherever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Truly. Totally. Wherever. He could fucking care less about you, really. When it comes to that. Okay, so now, okay, so they brought you on because you're a goalie, let's say. Mm-hmm. Then they put you in that uniform you tried on. Mm-hmm. Um, then you went out into, yeah. onto the street. Yeah. So did you have hockey practice? Is that what, oh. is that how that worked? Like you went out on the street as a cop and then you. Well, I still out. had to go to, um, I still had to go to Aylmer. I still had to go to police academy and I had to do 15 weeks of of training out there. I saw the movie. I know exactly what goes on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so you, you, you know, you do your 15 weeks out there and that's learning all the acts and learning, <clears throat> you know, writing exams and doing, you know, weapons training and, and tactical training and stuff like this. 
Then you come back to your force and they put you with a training officer and you ride with your training officer for X amount of weeks until he says, yeah, this guy's ready to go on his own. And uh, What happens if he's not ready to go on his own? Yeah, Is very, that ever, does that happen? Very few happens. Okay, yeah, even though, okay. Even so though, no one steps up and said, this guy sucks even, at this. I think they well. know, right? They, they use their intuition to understand and yeah. something that they've, they've known for a long time. And I got to tell you, you know, later on, um, you know, as a training officer myself at one point, I could say, listen, I, they're not really strong uh, here, or they're not really strong there. Um, they should be, you know, they should continue their training. But they could be placed somewhere where their strengths yeah, but lie. They're, but they're not. They're oh, kicked they're out not. on the road. They need policemen out on the road. That's a money thing. Okay. Yeah. It's just. Uh, I think I've a few of those. Yeah. Will he, will, will he kill somebody? Uh, oh. No, he's not that. Like, he's not like. You know, guns when we hit guns, but he's just like weak on the highway traffic after. He's weak on, you know, he's weak on the... Um, How to speak to know, people or... Yeah, like he's, his communication skills are bad or, or, or his his street smarts are really weak or something. They don't care. It, You know, he's done his training. Yes, we're, we're, I'm finished with him. But I am suggesting that he does more or she does more. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. I had a friend that told me about a <laughs> copper that he works with that that uh, was so afraid of confrontation yeah. um, that when anything ever went down, like in a bar fight or anything like yeah. that, or somebody was called, yeah. he was always busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't come to those calls. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, they, and everybody knows oh, that they, he's just sitting in his cruiser. Oh, they're picked out quick with the guys on the street. They're picked out Yeah, quick. I got some cop buddies who, who say that they don't, uh, like they're the first to show up to every scene because there are, cops that just don't want to be first oh absolutely buddy you know absolutely fascinating i mean a lot of guys well, i shouldn't say a lot of guys but some guys would say well let's let the ambulance get there first you know <laughs> wow you know let's let's, let's put get, them let's in, get uh... let's get the fire guys there and and uh and uh the ambulance there and then we'll, we'll you know the guy that's done this that the, the perp he's long gone so why do we have to get there first okay so this is funny <laughs> because we had, we had less in a firefighter Mm -hmm. And he said that oftentimes he was there way ahead of the cops. Oh, and now yeah, we yeah. know why. Abs yeah, yeah, no <laughs> shit. Absolutely, absolutely. And and police uh, sirens are different than <clears throat> fire sirens, which are different than ambulance sirens. And you get to know the different sirens real quick, you know. As a cop, you say, okay, ambulance is close. Okay, so we can circle one more time. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> that's know? fascinating. Uh, now I, yeah, we're I speaking so. in generalities, right? Like I am speaking in generalities. Yeah, I, I'm sure there's coppers I, out there that are really. I quite... guarantee you that there's more guys that want to be there first than there right. is that don't. Right. No but doubt. But like any other job, like any other profession, there's weak and there's strong. Right. And everything in between. And everything in between. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sure. You know, like if you're not really, if you're not really <clears throat> capable with your own abilities, do you really want to be first at a bar fight? Mm. Yeah. You know? Rightly so. You know, if you're a, if you're a PW, a female officer that's been, uh, that's happens to be in that location, patrolling in that location, do you really, does she really want to be the first at a bar scene? She weighs 120 pounds soaking wet. Yeah. You know, uh, our, no slight, no our, slight on PWs. No but slight on PWs. There's yeah. guys the same way. 100%. There's guys the same way, you know? Yeah. Guys that weigh 150 pounds, 160 pounds, couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper bag. And, you know, that is not their strength. Right. However, if I was dealing with a, with a case where uh, children were involved or something, they're very strong. I would, I would actually ask dispatch to send me that car. Right. Okay. You sure. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like... So there's strength and weaknesses out there, but, you know, policing, it's very important that you know how to uh, physically handle yourself because chances are eight times out of 10 during your shift, you're going to get a physical type call. Now, the person might not be there, but they still could be there. You know, so if you're a little bit shy about that stuff, um, you might wait till fire shows up or the other unit gets there first, yeah. you know. Lots of times I've seen guys driving the other way. Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lots it's very interesting. Yeah, it's um it's a, a thing that most people don't, you know, 
like I think I told you guys before when we were talking over a beer one time, you know, I said it's like um, if 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 the general population knew, I mean, they're cozy in their beds at night, right, asleep and knowing that, you know, the police are nine one one away, you know, fairly sure, fairly sure. fairly quickly probably nine one one away hopefully yeah. hopefully hopefully. Um, but if you were actually out on the streets with the cops and you're actually seeing the law being being made, um, you would be shocked. You would be shocked. No matter, like I said, that saying that we have. Yeah, that, what is you know, that saying? That, that, uh, you know, people that respect the law and like sausages should see neither one being made. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, I remember you saying, that. "Yeah, that's a good one. It's it a good, good sausage." You know, uh, it's a good you, sausage. You would it's never, a good you saying. would never eat another sausage. <laughs> no, you now, now you're in. making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I have coffee and I need a sausage. You know, yeah. <laughs> but you know, you, you, you know, it's it's like kind of like uh, walk a shift in my shoes and see what see what you think about being a quarterback or being about you know <clears throat> an armchair quarterback with this call. You 100%. know. Uh, you could be sipping on a coffee like we're doing right now, and next thing you know, you're being dispatched to gunshots. You know, uh, shots fired, or somebody's, or or, or or officer down. You know, and you have to be able to ramp that up so quick. You know, ramp it up so quick. But that goes back to what we talked about in another podcast: the silent stress. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, you guys, you sit there, <clears throat> and when that bell goes off, what's at the end of that bell isn't good. Mm. So coppers spend an enormous uh, num- hours of waiting, and then the bad thing happens. Yeah. So there's that stress that's building up. Absolutely, and you can go you can go an entire three day uh, shift, like your three afternoon shifts, and the only thing you got was maybe a domestic dispute uh, that was nothing, and a cat up a tree, to you know mass stabbing, uh, you know. Uh, bar fight with people down and or a traffic accident with kids dead on the road and you know like you just don't you never know what you're going to get into right and and but as the police force and and i can't speak now because as you know i've been retired for a little while but uh back in back in my time you know before um before cell phones what was the era (laughs) yeah what was the era like 90s 80s Uh, 90s 80s 80s uh, I joined in 83. Yeah. It's a dirty time. Yeah, oh, it, it was a rough time. And we still had the crime. We didn't have the crime that we have now because we didn't have the weapons that we have now. Um, out on the street, you mean? Out on the street, right. yeah. Oh, we didn't have them as cops either. We, we carried 38s. <laughs> That's true, sure. <laughs> you know? um, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, like I said, I don't know how it is now as far as the... The mentality out there on the streets but uh, back then it was um, we didn't have partners we drove in single man units um, and so it was very much uh, hmm. you know protect your ass try not to get in trouble uh, but it, the, the bottom line is was was get to go home right at the end of shift right you know? oh that makes absolute yeah, sense yeah and, so, and let the fire guys get there first and let the ambulance get there first <laughs> Sorry, I love that. I can't believe that. So, so you know, um, when they needed something, and then maybe gets us into what we wanted, we were going to talk about. You know, mm-hmm. um, uh, when it comes to finding the right uh, guys on the street to do um, less than honorable things uh, that need to be done, or somebody says it needs to be done. Um, there's that weeding out process of how was he as a patrolman? Was he what they call a solid? Was he a solid? Um, was he a good cop? And when they when they meant good back in those days, they meant um, look the other way. Would he? Would he? Um, was he a character that would change his notes to make it okay for another cop? You team know, team player. What, what, was he a team player? You know, bottom line. Um, and if he if he if he checked off all of those squares, um, and he was one of the boys, um, then he might uh, he might get recruited to do other things with 
with a you know a nice big carrot dangled in front of his face you know to make sure that once he's on board he's on board you know right so you know so they 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 weed these things out and there's not a police force that that, that that's in existence that doesn't have history as far as less than honorable ways of solving or getting the job done I guarantee you that. I but, guarantee you that. But as a civilian, as you know, uh, I'm a law-abiding mm -hmm. civilian. Mm -hmm. um, I have to kind of agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they say that you don't fight fire with fire, but if you've ever seen a forest fire or a grass fire, they absolutely do. They absolutely do. They, they burn, burn cu it out. cut a break and burn it out. Mm -hmm. The um, so, mm. yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, maybe there's exceptions or there's, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, you tell me, I guess. Um, what happened? Where did it start? Uh, I, think, I think the perception, I think the perception has changed as time's gone by because I think there's intelligent people like are sitting around this table that have to say to themselves, well, how do they get these things done? If it's all by the book, how does it, how do they solve all these things if everything is by the book? You know, because... In my line of work, if I followed the book to a T, you know, we'd still be there shooting the movie or whatever. I mean, yeah. there's, you're not going to go against safety regulations or anything, but what I'm saying is there's we, always... We exercise a little creativity. Absolutely. Absolutely. But when you're talking about creativity in the police force, you're talking creativity because you're dealing with things that require creativity. Right. No. We're dealing with... Now, we're not talking about a copper who beats somebody up because he's got an ego issue, um, and he's just police brutality type mm. an issue. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Like, this is a bad guy downtown, or he catches a guy down an alleyway, and, and he roughs him up a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're talking about, right? No. Um, not now. Right. Not now. Back in the day, it was a way of getting things uh, done, um, you know. But again, like I said to Drew, we're talking about <clears throat> before cell phones. Uh, we didn't even have cameras in the uh, interview rooms. Mm -hmm. So you know, you used to take a bad guy into an interview and you know, plunk him down in his chair across the table from you. The only thing in between you and him was a typewriter that got used sometimes, um, and. <laughs> You'd say to him, you'd people say are him, now wondering what a typewriter is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you'd say to him, yeah, you'd say to him, uh, you know, I understand you have information and you got a fairly pretty face. You're not leaving with both. <laughs> you know, and that was the cue for your partner who's waiting outside in the hall to hear those words to come in. Okay, just so for any writers listening to this podcast right now, yeah. I own the copyright to yeah, that you, statement. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I gave it to you. But <laughs> well, that was the cue for your guy to come in, your partner to come in, and stand as big and tall as he could beside you. And um, Intimidation. That's huge intimidation. Well, let, no. let, let's go back to this carrot. Yeah. Um, did you have a carrot dangling in front of your face? Oh, absolutely, Drew. You know, I, I got to a point where, um, you know, I was one of the boys. I was... I was a, good cop <laughs> um you know i'd done a little time on the on the on the on the road guys knew that they could count on me to have their back and you know i'd been in some situations where guys were saying you know i didn't hit him you know he fell and you know i would say yeah that's correct I, you know i saw him fall you know type of thing um and so i was you know i was one of the guys and um there was a there was a need for five guys to run a, uh, a particular um, operation, I want to say, to uh, rid a big city, uh, a city that was in its um, infancy, but is a big city now. Um, it was growing, and um, the mayor of the city was inviting um, big business to the city to enhance the growth and the industrial part of it and the, the opportunity wealth. and the wealth. And so, you know, you got your, your Hondas and your uh, IBMs and your, you know, 
companies all come here and set up your headquarters or come here and set up your you know your your offshoots and stuff uh, this is what we have to offer you um, in the mayor's um, in the mayor's um, thinking uh, there was too much there was too much street street drugs for her for her liking um, and uh, so we were we were we were invited to um, to join this uh, this uh, group that was going to take care of uh, of that it was going to okay. it was going to try and um, um, decrease the amount of street dealing and, and things like that in the streets by not making it very comfortable for and how did those they, who were uh, doing it those who were doing it and, and when I say not comfortable I mean taking it outside the courtroom you know getting, yeah, yeah, getting yeah. like dealing with this problem before it got to the courtroom yeah most bad guys that go to court they don't care oh. they pay their fines they go to do some time they get paid well for when they get out who that's cares it, that's it that's it. They know the system. It doesn't matter. But you were recruited. I was recruited. Yeah, I was recruited. I was called. How'd you go about recruited? Yeah. Uh, I was called over. Um, I was called over the uh, the radio uh, one eight one one midnight shift to uh, see the staff sergeant uh, behind a, a gas station, um, and it was the uh, morality uh, morality staff sergeant, so drugs and prostitution bureau. Staff sergeant, um, and uh, that was the end of the message. So I'm thinking, oh, you know, what's this? I'm a patrolman, you know. So I went over there, and he's sitting in an unmarked, and I pulled up beside him, and he said to me, um, uh, "There's a there's a car parked there's a car parked at a golf course down the road and around the corner." Um, and like I said, this is a midnight shift, so it's around 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, somewhere in there. There's a car parked there, and uh, the guy that's driving that car, we need him arrested. Just like that, you know. I'm thinking, oh, okay, you need him arrested. <laughs> For what? You know, that's exactly <laughs> what I said. What? I said, okay, what, what, do we, what, do we, what do we got him on? Well, that's up to you. That was, that was my test. Ah, that was my test. It's it's up to you. You know, Fish, it's up to you. And so I'm thinking to myself, okay, so what does that mean? Does it mean if I say, if I say no, does it mean I'm ostracized? If I say no, does it mean I'm not a good cop anymore? If I say no, does it mean I have no upward mobility within the police force like I'm going to be a patrolman my entire career? How old are you at this point? I'd be... 22. 23. Okay. Wow. 30-ish. Yeah. Wife at home. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no kids yet, but um, wife at home. And so... <clears throat> I I have to evaluate all of this in a very short period of time because he's, yeah, yeah. he's sitting right car to car with me, okay? And um, I say, okay, so you need, need him arrested? Yep. Okay. Um, can I ask why I, you need him arrested? No, you can't. You just need him. Okay, so you want me to go over and sit on the car and... When he comes out, like he's in there, yeah, we know he's in there. He's in the he's in the, the clubhouse. Yeah, yeah. Which is we've been long closed, so I'm thinking to myself, he's got to have something to do with the golf course, or else why would he still be in there? Hmm. So, <clears throat> you know, I don't know why, because um, I, I I really did like it on the road. I mean, I was I was perfectly happy at that point in my career being a patrolman. Um, I knew the good guys, I knew the bad guys, but I said, yeah, okay. You know? Did you have any inkling that they were doing anything? 
I had no incline that it was a test. Okay. It was, it was strictly a test for me. Oh, wow. That, that you're going to, that we're going to ask you to do things if you pass. They're going to take, that are going to require you asking no questions. That are going to require you getting them done and getting them done efficiently. You're just thinking they have some kind of business and that is thinking, what it is. Uh, maybe the guy could be a major player. Maybe mm-hmm. he could be a major uh, drug distributor. Maybe he, uh, they strictly need his information that they don't have. And if he's placed under arrest, I'm going to grab all of his information. Hmm. Um, anyway, you know, without getting into that too hard, uh, I went over, sat on it, and, and arrested him. What would you arrest him for? Impaired driving. Right. Yeah. And yeah. And, 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 was, and was he? Had he been drinking? I no idea. Likely been drinking. Like, yeah. You know. Okay. But was he impaired? Who who <clears throat> knows? Who cares? Right. I, I, okay. I waited till he drove out of the parking lot and pulled him over. Put the put the uh, lights on. Man. Okay. Well, so that led whether us he to... was whether he was impaired enough to uh, to be um, uh, you know um, carried through whether the arrest would be carried through as in when he blew back at the station it would come back with the numbers that would imply that he was going to be held and you know and charged I didn't really care right you know that's not what... that's not the, it's not that's not the point in that in that even in, to this day that's not the point in an impaired driving it's up to the police officer to say that not only did i um smell the odor or see blurred blur uh, blurry eyes or bloodshot eyes but i also saw erratic driving um you know he crossed over the line twice before he pulled to the and when he pulled over he put his front tire in the ditch or you know you, you're, sure. you're backing it up with other kind of things right well if you think about it it's you if it's if it's if it's one guy against another guy, and the one guy carries the law and the, all the all the ramifications, I mean it's pretty easy to say that you saw him cross the line and with his vehicle, or that you saw him drive on the soft shoulder, or that you. He may personally think, "Well, I didn't even notice." I, 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 I well, yeah, maybe I did. Have you been drinking? Yeah, I had a couple of drinks. Well, you know, right. I think you're impaired. You know, which justifies your. Uh, uh, arresting him. my arrest. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then. And you passed. I passed. So I how passed. was the, how was this? You know, you passed and, 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 and what are they, now what? Well, <clears throat> it was a case where they had to find, um, they had to find four other guys because this detail included uh, and, and needed uh, f- five guys um, to work two shifts um, with a, th- with a, the odd guy rotating in and out of pairs. Right. Um, so yeah, I thought nothing of it after, uh, nothing more of it after I, um, made the arrest. Um, I notified the staff sergeant involved that he was under arrest. Well, he heard me go off with the guy and he heard me, you know, Heading back to the station do what with you the guy. Had to do. So, yeah, yeah. He's on the radio. Yeah, I was sure. on the radio. So he knew that that, that that I'd done it. But I never inquired later on as to why I'd done it or, you know, what happened to the guy or anything else like this. You, you know, you get back to the station and you hand him over to the breath tech, and the breath tech takes it from there, you know. Um, um, so what I didn't know was they were actually recruiting four other guys. And testing for other guys, and they finally came up with the with the five guys. That similar came. sort of passing, similar test, I guess. Yeah, for each we guy. were all we were all big guys. We were all six six three or better. You know, we all weighed two hundred or better. Uh, we all uh, been on for a little while. We all were um, athletic. We were um, pretty tough boys. Tough guys, you know. And you were all mind, extra good did, guys. Didn't mind fighting. Didn't mind. Yeah, we were good. Extra good cops. We were good. Yeah. We were good. And so when they found the five guys, uh, we were notified that um, separately that we needed to um, we needed to attend uh, City Hall one afternoon. 
and that was the way it was presented to us. We needed to attend City Hall, say, at, you know, 2 o'clock, say, I don't really remember the time, but uh, wear, wear a suit and tie and, uh, and uh, be at City Hall. Okay. So, you know, we met, and uh, I walked in. I recognized the other guy, one of the other guys. Right. The other three hadn't shown up yet, but came, <clears throat> came shortly after there, and we all knew each other. Now we greeted one another and kind of with like, what, the fuck's, what, what are we doing what here? What the fuck's going on here? <laughs> you know what are we what are we doing? Do you know Do you know what's going? No, I don't, what the fuck? Do you, I thought no, I don't. I have no idea. Like, what's going on? What are we doing? Next thing you know, down comes the uh, chief of police. Cuts off the elevator. In all of his scrambled eggs and you know his yeah his shit on his hat and everything you know. I'd probably in my career seen the guy th twice in my entire career. Once when I was uh, sworn in, and then once passing in, in, at headquarters one time. So, but there he was in all his mm. grandeur, and uh, he says, Come with me. So we went up and went into the office of the mayor. You know, big oak doors and uh, big brass handles and. Uh, Secretary that sits out in the little vestibule outside, and she says, uh, "Go on right in." So Chief let us in. There's the mayor, and it was like, "This is what we need done. You've been handpicked to do this for your." City and your country, basically. Yeah. You know? You know? And did uh, that make you feel good? That absolutely. You, yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, you're in the audience of the mayor. <clears throat> yeah. and you're in the audience of the chief of police. And you've been handpicked. You've been handpicked with four other dudes. So you're kind of stoked about this moment big, in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, it's a big okay. police force, too, man. We're not talking hundreds here of coppers. We're talking thousands. You know, and you're handpicked. Yeah. Really. You know? Ocean's five. Yeah, something you know, like that. Something like that. Yeah. Anyway, in a nutshell, boys, it was do what you need to do to get street drugs out of here. Period. And make Pip, it safe period. for us, for for the good people of make it good of for us city. bringing in uh, executives from Honda and IBM and that to look around the city and we can show them this latest statistics on the lack of this and that that we have here you know make it um, you know um, as livable as you can for their kids that are going to be attending public schools and stuff like that you know right. it was basically it was basically a you know, a wink, wink, nudge, nudge type of scenario where you need, you need to do this. It's not going to take, it's not going to take weeks. I understand. It's not going to take, or not going to take days. It's not going to take weeks. It's not going to take months. It's going to take years. But you're the first volley of um, ammunition that we're throwing at it, you guys. So here's, this is what we want done. Are you, are you in? And it was the chief that says, "Yeah, going forward, you have to agree to this." Oh, what are you going to say? Yeah, of course, chief. No, I disagree. What the hell? The five of you are standing there together. Yeah, no, we're. Not, I'm not doing it. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, and there was perks too. Believe me, there was perks. I mean, okay, you're not wearing uniform. You can grow your hair where you want it. You can wear what you want. Okay. Right on. You're driving unmarked vehicles that change every day. Every other day, okay, you're um, you're on a radio frequency that's very seldom used. Um, you you're nobody else knows what you're doing. There's n there's not a well, this is what we were told. There's right. not another copper outside of this room here. Oh, and the guys that recruited you, sure, that have anything to do with it. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if anything that you're doing. Require somebody to call the police. You better get out of there. Ah, wow! Because okay. they don't—they don't have a clue. They who don't you have are. a clue. 
they might know who you are if you go, if they got there, but they have no idea, and we and we can't let we can't have this out. In, yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. We can't have this out in the population. Did you carry a badge? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. You carried your badge. You carried your badge for sure. But what I'm saying is, Randy, is you could never have another copper in uniform come to a place where you were in plain clothes, and there's a body or there's somebody beaten up or something, and you saying, "Don't worry about it." Right. You know, we're a separate group. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, anybody because, could say that. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, what would happen is he'd get <clears throat> back to his platoon and say, guess what? You know, I got... I got totally. You no. Know, yeah, and then the cat's I, out of the bag. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. out of the bag, and then it's, then it's no good. So, so, did, so yeah. did you already feel at all like uh, a bit of a special kind of cop? Like you were above else, uh, others, and or, or anything like that? Not at the beginning, Drew. Not at the beginning. Okay, okay. Not at the beginning. I was, I was kind of... And I have to say, I have to say, out of the five guys, um, I was I was the more grounded. Okay. As, in, in so far as what I believed as grounding is, as far as limits or um, how far you could take something before it started to actually bother my morality. Right. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. The I moral mean, compass I, of the my group. My moral. Yeah. I ha I still had <clears throat> limits. Okay. It started off that way. Okay. Right. Much like we talked about that that seven five movie, that thing that we yeah, saw, yeah. where the copper started off by, you know, taking a hundred dollars out of a bag of drug money and putting it in his back pocket because nobody was looking, and it ended up with him going to kidnap and kill somebody. Jesus, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's a it's a it's a a roller coaster. It's a um, I don't. It's kind of like you, you kind of like feed off of the the adrenaline, but more than that, you feed off of the being untouchable. Mm -hmm. You know, like most people don't understand what it what it would feel Power. like to be yeah, be what it would feel like to be literally untouchable in this city. I got the mayor and the chief of police in my back pocket. I can do. Matter of fact, I've been told to do right, exactly. what needs to be done. You know? Well, what does that entail? Okay, what does it entail to do what needs to be done? Well, I know the objective. I know our objective. But how are we going to accomplish that? I mean, what, what, what does that look like? Arresting these guys? No, they, they didn't want them arrested. They don't want them in the court system. No, 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 no. It wasn't to put them into, you know, guys in... Guys in uniform can do that, arrest guys that they suspected dealing drugs and they found drugs on. They can do that. You guys are to make it very clear to them that they should not choose this city to be in. So right away, right away you got the huge wink like. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, do what you need to do. Don't kill anybody. Right. So that's your limitation. That's, that's the right. only. That's insane. That is a huge scale, really. I mean, do my what God. you need to do. Don't kill anybody. So there you got five guys. Carte blanche, carrying guns, carrying badges. Go out and get it done. You know, and that became that became that became you know, my life for a little while. You know. And you watch the escalation of um, the way things are done to achieve the goal. Slowly start to spiral harder and harder and harder towards that line of morality. And then cross over it. You know. Then cross over it. You know. Where, you know. And I, you know what? I don't feel comfortable on saying what we did, um, you know, as far as, uh, I'll just say that, you know, some of the things that we did, you know, there's no, um, there's no statute of limitation. Yeah. On, yeah. On whether you can be charged now or for what you did 30, right. 30 odd years ago. Right. And I'm not talking about murder. We never killed anybody. Right. 
Um, hmm. took, okay. it pretty, took it pretty close, though. Yeah, but, I can only imagine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. And how long did you do this for? But we got it. We got it. We got it done to the um, to the uh, satisfaction of the powers that be, and then we were disbanded. I want to say, I want to say it expand. You know, and I know I told you when it was sharper in my mind, I wrote it all down and everything. Mm-hmm. Off the top of my head, I can't say exactly how long it lasted. A year, more than a year, though. Right. Yeah. But I, I was going to say, like, you said you stepped over that line of morality mm-hmm. to do sometimes what you had to do. But <clears throat> if, you're, if you look at who you're dealing with, uh, their lack of morality. Right. And giving kids crack or yeah but did you ever Fentanyl. feel did you ever feel like you were and that, really compared and believe me guys that was the that was the, that was the justification that you had in the back of your head while you were doing these things you know it's it's far easier to do something um uh, that's not uh that's not within the law or within the rules um and when you're telling yourself these people are bad that you're doing it to much like the guy in the movie we said took the money from a drug dealer so it wasn't like right. taking it out of an old lady's purse but did you, know? you now did mm. but did you uh or any of the guys you were with i imagine perhaps abused the oh uh so-called privilege oh i mean the mere fact that we were asked to do what we did was 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 abusing the oath that we took to uphold the law yeah I suppose right. that's true i mean i mean they broke it by asking us to do what they wanted us to do by any means necessary, we don't want the courts involved. I mean, that, right then you're you're dealing with you're dealing with underhanded stuff. You know? Was it easy? Did people just get up and leave when you went uh, down and did what you did? Uh, the intimidation or whatever you used on that individual? No, it, t- it took a couple of times. To- it took, but we were we were um, we were ruthless. We were we were ruthless, and we had the means. Um, we had the places to do it, um, all set up for us, you know, places we could take people. And, um, so we were, um, it took maybe some guys, it took longer than others, but the guys that we dealt with eventually got the, uh, got the point, got the point. I bet. Mm-hmm. So now that said, let's say over the period of a year, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you guys did your thing and, um, whatever individual however many there were um left town or went whatever yeah when you guys were disbanded yeah and that ended Mm -hmm. did it all just not flood back into town absolutely absolutely but the, the objective had been the objective had been attained by cleaning it up so that we could get these big companies and the investment the, the investment into this at the time. Yeah. It was just a perk that they could show. Listen, we got very, very minimal drug problems and this problems and we got these parks and we got this. And yeah. We got that. Fascinating. It was just, it was just something to add to the, to the uh, pamphlet to be sure. handed out, you know, but it involved, um, you know, like a street dealer just doesn't grow his own dope. You know, he gets it from a supplier, you know, and a supplier doesn't usually grow it himself either. He gets it from a manufacturer, you know. Um, so while you're dealing with this level on the streets, you're also dealing with higher ups that get more organized as they go, you know. And so we get very well known um, in a relatively short period of time as not to fuck with these amongst the street people. yeah and that if you're gonna stay you, you're gonna you, pay you're gonna meet you're gonna pay okay yeah. it's interesting now but i mean uh you know there was a time when uh marijuana wasn't uh, wasn't legal here in canada mm-hmm. and um i went to these people at times you know and i bought mm-hmm. some marijuana mm-hmm. um I'm was shocked. this was? <laughs> I am too. 
I mean, fuck. Oh, I, I was a bad guy, man. Oh, man. I was, you know, I'm surprised I didn't get locked up. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, I imagine that, uh, <clears throat> like, was this what you were dealing with? Just just guys like this? Or, like, were they young and kids and just dumb? and Or, or were they really, you know, you had that, that uh, excuse in the back of your mind, you said. You know, but... There was no, you know, there was no real set. If, if what you're asking for is, are we looking for just uh, guys that are dealing crack versus guys that are dealing marijuana? Yeah, like the damage that those drugs do. No, you know, no, no, it was drugs. Um, you know, because we all believed at that time, you know, that marijuana was a gateway drug to mm -hmm. other things, and that that was being sold in public schools and high schools and therefore you know you're just cultivating the next line of addicts and and you know because they're going to graduate to you know pills or you know coke or you know right other than heroin okay. whatever um and uh, so no there was nothing as far as that is concerned like uh like take it easy on the marijuana guys just get these guys no, right no, right no, no. I mean, for the first two weeks of this project, we did nothing but sit in a room probably this size with files and files and files of all the known uh, drug uh, arrests, uh, drug uh, investigations. Um, learning who's who. Learning who's who, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't want to go off topic, um, but I'm going to, somewhat. Um, let me. What are your thoughts on safe injection sites? Huh. Don't like them, buddy. I don't like them. Okay, let's move on. No, seriously. Uh, um, yeah. No, no. Um, you know, <clears throat> what people don't understand is that um, drug addiction. It, and when we're, uh, and I'm talking about um, opioids now. I'm not talking about marijuana because right. you could argue you can't get addicted to marijuana. I right. mean, yeah, it's a um, recreational type thing. But I mean, well, I'm um, not addicted. That's why I smoke it every day. Yeah. Yeah. It's not an addiction. <laughs> okay, it's, I'm it's, shocked again. <laughs> it's um, it's when you're talking about when you're talking about um, when you're talking about opioids. You're talking about powerful drugs, and you're talking about powerful um, addiction that comes with it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, to give them a place to get safely high is not addressing the problem of why they're wanting to use these drugs to get high. You know, it's a, it's a mental thing, so they've got mental problems. Um, they need help. I don't. I don't argue that they're human beings, and we should try and help them. But statistically, if you lined up ten addicts, and you went down the row, and you said to them, "I'm here to help you. I can put you in a. Uh, I can get you a place to live. I can get you a job. I can clean up your life." Do you know that you'd have one out of the ten say, "Please help me." The other nine tell you to go fuck themselves. They're perfectly happy doing what they're doing. Do they know what they're doing, though? Those nine? Well, I mean, I imagine they do. <laughs> Not Never being an addict myself, I, 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 it's a good question, but, I mean, there are some... There are some times in between being hopped up that you're halfway sober and must look around and say... Well, you hope, man, you, hope you know, that. man, wandering to from one church to the other to feed and going and getting a bag of clothes of somebody that threw it in a gar like it's just not a normal like life, a you know lot of I mean? people. Like, I mean, if you're in a relationship with a really bad or or with a girl that treats uh, treats your or your buddies in a relationship with a girl mm. treats uh, treats them like shit. Mm. You say to your buddy, dude, you got to get out of that. Mm. And he just doesn't believe it. He doesn't see it. He doesn't feel mm -hmm. it the same way you do. I know, oh, man, she's great. Mm -hmm. You know, she mm -hmm. whatever. Mm. Um, I imagine that in some degree, those nine of the 10 kind of feel that way too. Like, well, I'm not addicted. I just, or something like that. I'm, I imagine if you're doing heroin every day <laughs> or something, you, you should have some understanding of what's going on in your life. But I, I've never been there. I don't know. You know, you know, Drew, if you're doing something like fentanyl, for instance, that can kill you by doing more than a grain of salt, 
you know, two grains kill you type of thing. You must know that you're playing with, you know, you're playing with Russian fuck. roulette. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I mean? You must know that you this is know. fucked. You'd think this you'd is know. not no. Yeah. This is not stoking up a. This is not sparking up a, a joint. This is fucking. This is you know. A hundred percent. You know. Oh yeah. It's the same with you know like. The difference between going into a drugstore and putting a Mars bar in your back pocket and walking out is a lot different than walking into a bank with a gun to, to take take money out. You know, yeah, they're yeah. Both that, that's, but they're both that, but yeah, but there's the, different as night and day. That's a good point. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. you know, I don't want to pass judgment on these people, but these politicians that think that by giving them a place to get high is going to solve the problem or is some. Matter of fact, you know, the mayor of the city's had me in a couple of times and, you know, you know exactly what you're dealing with when she sits you down and she says to you, what's the solution to this opioid problem? Well, that's like asking me, what's the solution to alcoholism? There is none. We tried. It was called prohibition. Right. It didn't work. Okay. As long as human beings have... And we and we and we're proud of our, our Western civilization here. We had the freedoms of to vote, the freedom of choice, we have the freedom of speech. But anytime you give a human being freedom of choice, you all know that there's gonna be a certain amount that fucking make the wrong choices. That's the way we are, that's the creature that we're dealing with. Okay. Well, that's what these people have done. They've made bad choices, not saying that they had the greatest environments to grow up in or, you know. They, sure. they weren't they weren't justified in maybe getting high every once in a while, but that is the life that they've chose. But once you start stepping over that boundary, um, then you're dealing with something. You're not dealing with solutions anymore. You're dealing with problems. And how do we mit- how do we minimize the problem? Because you're not going to get rid of it. You are not going to get rid of it. But the guy that's paying the taxes, the guy that's paying for it all, you know, the yous and the me's that are putting tax bucks into this city, have had enough of, oh, we're going to turn over, this building is going to cost us a million dollars in taxes so they can go, go there and get high. Right. I don't understand. I, I, I don't understand. You know? How about the guy that's an alcoholic? Oh, we're we gonna give them a place to get drunk free. What are we? What are we doing? Yeah, we should have free drunk driving lanes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, for, yeah, I mean, yeah. free free beers downtown would be all right. Huh? Yeah. Well, there you go. It's a nice patio. <laughs> yeah. What we need to do is we need to get these people into psychiatric help, and we need to discuss the problems that they have as to why they're where they are, not give them a place to continue with their addiction. But on and the other we, side of that coin, is you just mentioned that nine out of ten will refuse that help. Refuse it. And what do you, because Randy, you know, it's a culture, it's a culture, and that's what these politicians don't understand. You're dealing with a culture. It's not just an addiction, but the drug addiction takes on a culture. A crack house is a is a house of culture. People that go there, are, they know each other. They hang it's out. It's a social thing. It's they a talk. social club. Okay. It's like two alcoholics getting together, to drink for whiskey together for a beer. And that's I right. imagine that they look over at. Uh, you and me walking down the road and think they don't give a fuck. They don't, yeah. You know, and uh, you know, and there's the what's the sense in them wanting to be part of our culture? Right, right. But you got these politicians that wouldn't know the difference between you know, wouldn't know a kilogram of heroin from a ham sandwich. Making these rules and making these laws that they don't have a clue what they're doing. It's fascinating that our mayor yeah. has. Uh, we've locked this in now. The um, the safe injection site is going to be now three blocks from my home, um, and and the downtown core, the city puts all the money into creating that nice walkway for the evenings and the restaurants and the patios mm-hmm. for the average consumer. That said, no one's going down there because they're frightened of all the other people that 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 safe injection site yeah. will attract. Absolutely. And the downtown core has already attracted. Absolutely. I know people right now that refuse to go down there for a walk. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not to mention the school, just uh, even closer, I right think, around than your home. The children's school. Yeah, the school. Yeah. 150 feet from it. It won't be when... 
A it won't be kids. if, it'll be when some kid's assaulted or worse at that school. Well, apparently yeah. the custodian does a, a needle sweep every day. Every morning when the custodian starts. I believe it. Makes They're it, everywhere. Yeah, makes, a, everywhere. makes a, a needle sweep of the playgrounds but then every you, day. But then you got a van down there handing out free needles. That's, that's correct. And then you have, you will have the drug dealers within however many hundreds of feet. Well, that's another thing. You have to give them a, an area of impunity where a guy can have a unit of drugs on him to go in to use at this 150 Main Street. Yeah, and where's he getting that? He's got to get it from his dealer. And he might as well get it close. And the dealer's going to set up within those limits of impunity, and he's going to send a runner outside of that to bring in one unit at a time so that if the runner's popped, all he's got is a unit, and he says, I'm going in to use. Right. It's called entrapment. You can't do that. So these guys are going to operate with impunity. Okay. You, you might as well. You wow. might as well. You might as well send. As 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 far fetched as this might sound, you might as well send the cartel a Christmas card, because they love it. They love it. The worst thing that you can do to an addict or to a uh, street dealer, as a cop, is seize his drugs. He doesn't give a fuck about the court date. It's he, his drugs because he he owes. That's right. The supplier. And they don't care you lost they it. They don't care. They don't want to hear that you got robbed. They don't want to care that they, you got the police took it. You owe them five thousand dollars worth of fentanyl. You better have the five thousand dollars on the date that's been arranged or else. Now speaking of this, it's interesting. If we combine this conversation with the earlier conversation, um, do you think that if you guys, uh, you five guys, didn't mm. uh, sort of abuse the situation, could you have done, what could it have helped otherwise? Could, like if you did everything on the legal side? Well, not, let's just say it wasn't still legal. You were asked to do anything, any by any means necessary, mm. just don't kill them. Mm -hmm. um, could you still have kept it at sort of a minimum? rather than sort of maybe going too far or anything, would that still have worked? Did you guys abuse the situation or did you kind of, you know, like let's say um, our city today just had something like this, you know? I'm not saying there is or isn't, whatever, I don't know. But mm. I imagine there's a scale that you worked on because some guys would respond to down here and, yeah, some, and some, some guys, guys didn't, mm -hmm. so you had to upscale. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering if if something like that, like, you know, you see movies all the time. Well, you gotta kind of step out of the fucking mm -hmm. uh, uniform to get things done. You see this in shit all the time, well, you and do. often and oftentimes it's the heroic thing to do in a movie. Yeah. Um, so I imagine that there is some heroism in some regards to having to do something like what you guys had to do, but, um, perhaps you did things that you personally didn't feel were uh, were justified? Well, at the beginning, I think we both looked at one another saying, um, um, what had just happened, what this guy did, was that okay? And it was kind of like, you all right with that? You know, like... Oh, like you looked at each yeah, other for... Yeah, yeah, for like acceptance. Yeah. But then, like I said, after... Months of this, days went by and weeks went by. Um, you didn't have to ask anymore. You didn't have to ask anymore. Because we all of, understood. Yeah, matter of fact, it got crazier and crazier, you know? I mean, especially if a guy wouldn't respond by leaving town. <laughs> you know, he was basically looking at you and saying, I don't give a fuck what you do to me. I'm not going anywhere. Well, that ain't happening. <laughs> you, know, you know, that, that that's not going to work. And so... We let you know nicely as we could. Second time wasn't as nicely, and then third time was not nice at all. You know, we very rarely had to get to stage three, though. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. How but many stages were there? Three. Wild. Yeah, three, three, and then you're just wasting time with a puke. You know, just. Now, you know. did you, did, when you were doing this, did you ever think that maybe there was another one of you guys in town? Or didn't, or or in another city. Well, that's interesting. There were uh, there, there were five of you. Yeah, and no one knew you existed. Uh, yeah. It, maybe there was another. They knew we existed. We didn't know our detail existed. Right. Yeah. Right. But then there might have been another detail 
similar to you similar guys. Similar to you guys. In another city? Yeah. In another city, mm-hmm. in another area, in another... I really think it stemmed from the infancy that this city was in at the time. Okay. And the growth and the stimulation that was foreseen by these... People. politicians right. but i use my imagination and i think to oh. myself if if no one knew about you guys mm. like your detail mm. uh there's other shit going there's down gotta there's gotta be other shit all of. over the place and uh well look at look at yeah yeah true pretty right? safe to say that something's going on like i said there's not a there's not a force big or small that hasn't had something or somebody Doing things that weren't a little above and beyond. Yeah, right on. Yeah, you couldn't. You couldn't get. You couldn't get the results that you needed if you followed the rules. Right. I can't just walk up to a guy that I suspect of dealing drugs and start patting him down. Can't. The rules today suck. Can't. We well. We, yeah, we, I we, suppose we just, it depends we, on who you're asking. But we, yeah. Yeah. Well, we had a conversation the other day. Um, we're in, I mean, we work with a lot of cops, so we, we get a chance to talk to a lot mm-hmm. of coppers. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they just tell you straight up, they know exactly who's driving around the streets oh. and who have guns in the cars, uh, and they can't do anything about it. Right, right, right. For the fear of being labeled as uh, profiling or harassing right. or whatever. Exactly. You know? They've just tied... Tied them up so yeah. bad. Now you can't really even do your job. And then there's some kind of card or something. Now I don't know. I oh. might be speaking off, but they have a card in their back pocket. The coppers, and if they approach you on the street, they have to fill out this card and then give it to you. That on the back gives you the right to call this number or <laughs> go on this website to say that uh, this cop harassed you or whatever, uh, whatever. I wouldn't surprise well, me. And, yeah. But I've had coppers say they won't do it. So they don't approach anybody because they don't want to do the paperwork. Wouldn't surprise me, buddy. It's it's insane, and it's only getting worse. But having said all this, having said all this, let me let me make something explicitly clear. Generally speaking, generally speaking, the guys and the gals that are working out there in uniform that are patrolling the streets are good people that mostly all live in the area. Mostly all are raising families in the area. They don't want to have anything to do with hurting anybody or being hurt themselves. They just want to do their job. And we all kind of join thinking that you're going to make a difference. You're not going to make one bit of fucking difference, okay? The only difference I ever made in my entire career were people that I helped. Ah. were people that I helped. Interesting. Find somebody, mm-hmm. find a missing person, um, recover a lost wallet, or help find their car that they saved up for, yeah. got stolen. Interesting. Bring, so when you look bring back a at kid's your kid's bike back to yeah, him, you no, know. that's awesome. When you look at your career, do you do? You, are you happy with it, or are you? Are you I, uh, uh, no, 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 because of, because of the time of the things that we did just outweighed in my mind, the good, all the good things I did because it got stupid. It got stupid. And, uh, and, uh, so they're like little demons I deal with, you know, um, uh, every once in a while, you know, I remind myself of. Um, of of really really good people that I met and helped, and you know that not everybody's a bad guy. You know, there's a lot of really good people out there. You know, mm-hmm. um, and there's some really good people that have fallen on hard times. And if you're really compassionate and really really sincere about the job, you can really really help them because you're in a position where. You have things at your fingertips, at your disposal, to be able to help them, if you want to take the time to put a little time into it, you know. But when you get recruited to do a detail, or you take it upon yourself to kind of enter that other side of the law, then it's very much a deflection of what you're hired to do, and the oath that you took, 
and the way that you're supposed to be looked upon. And what you thought you were getting into in the and first you, place. And what you thought. It's a complete left you know, turn. You, what you thought you were getting into to start with. That you can actually be recruited by people higher up. To yeah, and did you feel tricked? Yeah. Yeah, after. But it was my own decision, though, Drew. That's the thing. Like, bottom line is, any one of us could have said no thanks. Could you have? What would have happened if that's, had you? But that's the question. Yeah, yeah. In there lies the question. What would happen then? Yeah. You're a... So you've been asked to do something. You said no. Now you're somebody that has that's privy to what's going on. What are we going to do with you now? Did you ever witness another cop be a quote unquote bad cop? You know, didn't do what we yeah. wanted you to do. Oh yeah. And what would happen to that cop? No. Okay. No, you mean like, would another cop turn him in? Turn him in, or would they ignore him, or would they leave him out of things? Uh, oh, you mean somebody on? that didn't did wasn't didn't a comply? Team player? Yeah, it wasn't oh, yeah, a team no, player. They were man. Yeah, immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They were, you know, they were the brunt of jokes, and they were, uh, you know, you get dispatched someplace, and you know your backup would be this person, and the guy would come on the radio and say, uh, "Disregard my backup. I don't need backup." You know, or please send another unit. You know, and they would know that that was Copper's way of saying, "I don't want you here." You know, um, hmm. you know, things that show up in their pigeonholes with their mail. You know, see, I know so, <laughs> I know so many yeah. cops. Like like uh, Randy said moments ago, uh, we know a lot of cops. We work with a lot of cops. Yeah. Um, and I'm really good friends with a few cops. Uh, that are very close to me, yeah. and I love them. And they're like, yeah. they sound like, and just, you know, I know them so well, and they're the, the best kind of people in the world. But I also know you. I don't, I didn't know you then, but I, I know you now, and you're like one of the best kind of people. Yeah, hundred oh, percent. I was going to say the same the, thing. But, but like, what, what, what happens? Hmm. You know, I, I couldn't imagine that you were a bad guy back in the day, or that you were, uh. or you know. Yeah, and, that, and that's a, that's a, you know, that's a fair question. It's 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 a good question. What happened to me? Uh, what happened to the other four guys? Um, you know, three of which are dead now. Uh, so there's only two of us left. Okay, I hope that I hope there was natural cause or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, as far as I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, Drew. Like, uh, what happened to me? Like, what happens to the person that... What happens to the guy that um, goes over the line suddenly or diverts to the dark side? Was it um, suddenly? I think you're one man. You were a hockey player. You joined the police force, and you were one man. And this is the man I'm speaking to today, I'm mm -hmm. quite certain. Mm -hmm. You're an awesome guy. We've known you a long time. Thanks, buddy. No, it, it's not a compliment. It's just the truth. Okay, thank you. So then you get on this particular detail, mm. and it ramps up over a period of time. As you grow in it, it whatever you became, let's say, for the lack of another term, um, you're, you're doing your job. I don't think that the man who you were left. And that's why, you, like you, you, you said, you were the moral compass of this whole five. I was. And I, I sometimes wonder if it bothers, well, the three, like I said, three are gone, but whether it bothers the other guy as much as it bothered me uh, now, right. what we saw and what, what happened. I kind of imagine it must. It must. Uh, you'd have to be a, a pretty cold-hearted prick for it not to, not to bother you on, on occasion. It's like, it's like you know... I can explicitly still, still see that, that my first um, little kid dead in a car in an accident. I can still see my first um, suicide victim. You know, um, those those are images that you know you just you, you just don't dismiss them. But when you're when you're perpetuating acts of violence um, under the name of doing something good. Um, it doesn't negate from the the act. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, the best way that I can put it 
the best way that I can put it is that old saying about power corrupting and absolute power corrupting absolutely. Right. You know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. You know. Um, mm -hmm. And you had absolute power. We had absolute power. So it's going to corrupt you absolutely. Did you ever, ever get a run into other coppers while you're in the midst of your doing your job? Yeah, we did once. We did once. Um, um, and we, we led them on a bit of a chase. Okay. And, uh, and, <laughs> uh, so you're in cars. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Jeez. and we heard him on, um, on his band because we had more than one radio, portable radio with us. And so my partner switched to the, their band and so we could hear him calling in, you know, and, uh, we had him on, he was radioing in, he was on a, he was on a chase. So, you know, other <laughs> units are coming. Oh no. So it was kind of like, uh, get rid of this guy quick. So we entered a cornfield and, uh, just took this car right through this cornfield. Wow. And, uh, took it, uh, across a ditch, barely got it across, ripped the underside of the car right off pretty much, but got it to the other side of this ditch and he didn't follow us. No, I guess not. Um, I want to try this. <laughs> he, he, didn't, yeah, he, like didn't, he didn't come after us. So we basically lost him. But then we had to show the <laughs> staff sergeant what we did, what to, the did to the car. <laughs> you know. That's hilarious. But uh, we even had license plates that weren't attached to anything. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah, 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 they weren't they weren't attached to anything. So. But then, if if a copper was following you and he ran those plates for whatever reason, just comes back um, not assigned. They were they were they were plates that had been turned into the MTO. Yeah, but it would come up on his computer that it's not assigned. So would he not want to pull you over because you've got a an illegal oh absolutely plate on the absolutely car? that's why we had to watch what we were doing. Yeah, yeah I mean it was yeah you didn't uh, yeah you didn't. Um, Let's put it this way. When you left the office, you didn't go out on patrol. You went to do something. You already had your you already had your detail in mind. Okay. So you went from A to B. So there's no willy nilly out there. He's not you, driving around so other people can see. You weren't right. grabbing coffees and doing nah, other shit. No, 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 no. Because getting was, a donut would have given you away. We would have been hands down yeah. gone. <laughs> no, we you know, we tried to remain as covert as we could. Yeah within the realm of doing business with people on the street. Yeah. You know? Now, there were some cops that I'm sure saw us shaking down people on the street who recognized us as as cops, but just probably thought well, we were in, just a, doing a, UC in, a, deal in and... a bureau. Yeah. Now, were the people that were heading all this stuff uh, giving you the mission or whatever, mm. um, are they good people? I don't. I don't know them outside of their job. Got yeah. Hmm. Good question. I, I never. I never. I never. Yeah, like, it's a good question. I, I mean, never. I never. Uh, like you said, you only saw this chief twice or three times in your entire career. Hmm. Um, was it political for him? Do you know? Was it? Oh, was, was it political? Was he making his way up the ranks? Oh, and, sure. and he was seeing his own power and having his own fun. Oh sure. Um. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, once you get to that rank, you're not a policeman anymore. You're a politician. Oh, yeah, think that's interesting. He's answering to the mayor, right? Yeah, yeah, and to the yeah. police bureau. Yeah, bring this into you. Oh, so good. Yeah. So good. Yeah, he's acting. He's he's a politician. That's you know, right? That's all there is to it. Matter of fact, the guys on the street can't relate usually to the chief of police at all. I mean, the farthest rank that a guy can probably relate to, who's still a patrolman, is probably your division inspector. Once you get up into superintendents and staff superintendents and then deputy chiefs and chiefs, they're just figureheads. You know? Now, are they on the same hockey team and all that? And they coached. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That's too funny. Yeah. But uh, I'm not saying they were bad guys. I mean, you could talk to them and stuff. Like, you know, if I saw them at the arena, I'm not have a yuck, you know. Yeah, sure. Chief. I I'm guess. sure he's a good yeah. dad and a good 
husband. And, uh, Everybody just had a job to stuff. do. They just had a job to do. See, there's no doubt that they took direction from the city. Right. Of course. Right. As you took direction from As them. I took direction, but there's no way that I can report to the mayor and have her give me directions on what to do in the field. It has to come from a commanding officer, right? Mm. Well, you can't get any higher than chief or commanding officer, right? Could be argued that... Um, could be argued that um, somebody in between doesn't want to be associated with that kind of stuff, you know. But the chief of police, on the other hand, he's just acting on orders from the sure from the mayor. There's a lot of carrots going around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a big business. Like oh, it's huge business, you know. No well, one thinks of, no one thinks of it that way. They say that you know, policing police are the biggest organized gang in the world. When you think about it. Yeah. Every city, every town, every bureau, every township has Yeah. Them. I mean, now at the same wow. time. They all wear same. They all wear uniforms. Big budgets. Big budgets. Yeah. A lot of, but a lot I mean, of money. If, you, if, you, if your guy, if your partner doesn't have your back and stuff like that, I mean, it wouldn't work anyway. Oh, no. It's the same as the military. If you military. didn't have somewhat of a gang mentality or whatever, same it wouldn't the, work. Same as the military. You would never get into a foxhole to, of a, to, with a guy that wouldn't have your back. I mean, right. Yeah. You know, there's no way I'm going on patrol with a guy that I know that is afraid. Absolutely. There's oh no my way God. because I would, re, I would refuse. I would, go in, I would go into the staff sergeant and say, staff, I refuse to be partnered with him. And this is why. Now, you can put me on the front desk if you want. Or you can banish me to the wherever. Well, I am not putting my life on the line with this guy. Is that usually respected? Yeah, it is. Okay. Matter of fact, if it gets to that point, that guy's been taken off the road to start with because, you know, the staff sergeant will get to know that nobody wants to work with the guy, right? Right. So, you know, those guys are weeded out pretty quick. Hmm. They have to be. Yeah. They have to be, you know. Be like a platoon in, in the military, you know. You know. The, a good commanding officer knows who his weak points totally. and strong points right. are. Has to. Has to. Who do I send in this case? Who do I send in that case? You know? Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Right? Who do, don't I send is probably the bigger question. Because a bad guy can escalate a problem more than... Big time. You know, yeah. than anything. Yeah. Say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, right? You know? So what happened when uh, when this uh, detail was done? What you what happened to you? Yeah, how did Where, that end? How did it end? <laughs> was it so, was it successful, quote unquote? I believe I believe it was. I believe it was. We were told it was. Okay. We were, we were told that we made a difference. We knew who we chased out of town for sure. They right. were gone. They were gone. Did it you make know? the city better? Was it worth it? Drew, I, I don't know if I want to say worth hell, it. Who the hell knows? Was it was that the reason the Honda brought? You know, right? Corporate mm -hmm. headquarters to our town or to our city, or this this office signed up, or who knows? All we know is we were we were assigned a duty. We went out and did the duty to the best of our ability, and uh, and um, if it helped, it helped. If right? It didn't wasn't because we didn't do what we were told. Okay, so one day. You, one night, whatever, mm -hmm. you guys are hot and heavy, mm -hmm. and someone comes to tell you it's over. Yeah, we were just disbanded. We were disbanded by uh, by an email, by a um, not an email memo. Like immediately, like as of this moment, or is two weeks from now we're going to cut it down? Or? End of the end of the week. Go cut end your hair. End of the week. Your, really? Put eh? your uh, <laughs> uniform on. Get back to. A... Is that really what happened? A uh, couple of guys. A um, couple of guys made bureau. Um, a couple of guys went right into a bureau, and the other three guys, me included, went back out in the road. Okay, so I don't know what bureau means. Like a detective bureau. Uh, oh, I see. Like okay. A, okay. Like a morality bureau or right. young offenders or whatever. Okay. You know, a, Just a another branch. Bureau, sort of, branch yeah, branch, okay. Yeah. And the other three guys, me included, uh, got booted back on the road, which for me was, was fine, but then it was during that time that I got to ask myself what what did I do that for yeah yeah the decompression time did it like, change your game yeah yeah it made me a different person you know it made me a different person uh yeah I, I, 
It's interesting because I still remember the first day that I put the uniform back on. Kind of felt like I'm not sure that I deserve to wear a ah. uniform that stands for this when I just did, did this. That. Right. I you know. I mean, it didn't last with me long. I got to go on patrol. It's yeah. not like I can stand around weeping in, yeah. the, in the dressing room. But you went and got a coffee and it was over. <laughs> you know, but it did, it did dawn on me like, yeah. Oh, well, you know. You know, this was uh this was heavy and this was um the worst part about it is you couldn't say anything to anybody. Couldn't tell anybody. Well, this right here is how most criminals get caught, right? They speak words cuz they can't help but uh, they can't help holding it in. So I imagine it was a bit of a similar vibe on your part. Yeah, I mean, I never really I never really was in fear of, you know, having any repercussions come back on me uh, because, you know, that would involve having a, a victim to give evidence. And in most cases, those victims were all gone. Right. You know, and they wouldn't give evidence against you anyway. Right. You know? Did the, Did any of you five ever get together and chat about this after the fact? No. Really, eh? No. So once you guys were disbanded, guys went into the bureau, three guys went into cars. I'll be perfectly honest with you, Randy. Once we were disbanded, I didn't want anything to do with the other four guys. Copy. Yeah. Yeah, I'd had enough. I had enough of them. Uh, one guy in particular. Um, uh, because the nature of the beast is that some people will take things farther than others. And some things bother people more than they bother others, you know. Um, and uh, we had a couple of guys in that 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 I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, I didn't want to have anything to do with outside of, you know, outside of what I had to do or what I was signed up to do. Right. Well, looking back on it, is is as like I said when we started this talk, it's, it's crazy. Like, <clears throat> why I even did it? Why well, even did it? Like, uh, did you ever receive the carrot they promised? No. Yeah. Okay. So, hence the question: Why? It wasn't forthcoming, and what? Because I, so I could prove that I was right. One of the guys, right? Maybe. I was already. I was already. Later. I was already there anyway. Yeah. But yeah. if I'd have turned it down, I certainly wouldn't have been. And my life would have been a living hell. I know. How long, how long were you a copper after the fact, after uh, the detail was disbanded? Uh, hmm. Ten years? Oh, okay. A, a length of time. Mm -hmm. And how did that go? Went all right. Okay. Went all right. That's all I have to say about that, really. I mean, it didn't end the way I wanted it to, but... right. And I have some thoughts as to why that did. Um, and I always worried that at some point, me and the other guys were going to be liabilities. What if, what if, what if one of us said something? Right. Not about, not about one another. Right. What if we said something about the mayor? Right. What if I picked up a phone and got yeah. an investigative reporter at the local rag and said, I got a story for you. Yeah. hundred percent. You know? I'm not going to be in uniform for my whole life, so I'm going to be retired at some point. But it doesn't inv it doesn't involve my pension or anything by me telling you what happened. The only f the only thing they had it over us, Randy, was that, like I said, statute of limitations, what you did to start with. Oh, is that right? You you did this, you know. Right. But, you know. Something that something that I know that all five of us deal with, and uh, you know, just yeah. For for a while, I'll be honest with you. For a while, uh, when I first got out of the police force, uh, I looked over my shoulder. I really did. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put anything above anybody. You know. Well, given the situation you were in, yeah, and like you know. I'm not, you know. I'm not here to sound uh, melodramatic or anything, but I'm, I'm just, 
I don't know what people are capable of. I less than uh, things I, have. I, I beg to differ. I think you are you are aware of what people are capable That's probably, of. Probably, well, probably. And hence the looking over your shoulder. Probably true. For all the conspiracy yeah. theorists out there. Yeah. I mean, I'm this here was to tell a you. conspiracy. I'm here to tell you, man. Um, and I'm not trying to turn people, like if they listen to this podcast, they're saying to themselves, I knew that, you know, that they're no fucking good. And, you know, this guy that pulled me over was prop. No, 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 no. First of all, look at yourself. Okay. First of all, take a, take a reality check and look at yourself in the mirror. Why did I get pulled over? Why am I being investigated? Why am I being shaken down? Okay. If you got nothing going on, then maybe you can say, How's he, how, how are they acting with me? Are they professional? Because I'll guarantee you that the cops that treat people less than unprofessional, there's a reason why they're being treated less than unprofessional. Right. That makes sense. No cop is going to walk up to you or you and treat you unprofessionally. I've, I, I personally, I, I mean, I've, I've been because stopped in my vehicle uh, more times than because you're going to say I want to. Because you know, you're going to say yeah, but but, but I've never say, had right. I've had never had a, a like problem. someone a cop come Drag up and you give out of me the some, car. Yeah, never had a yes, sir. Yeah, Here's some are a little moodier than the others, but. You know, everybody has bad days, but I'm saying totally. my license, insurance and registration. And yes, right. sir. No, but sir. I'm sure, you know, uh, other people, other types, yeah. someone who's not like me, you Absolutely. know, they but, may you know, deal with different kinds cop. of crap. It's, up, it's you know? up to the cop to determine at some point I got a good guy or I got a bad guy when they're pulling mm -hmm. you over. And they say I'm off with license ABC one, two, three. It doesn't come up on the dispatcher's computer that, oh, you got a bad guy. Right. You know, because they don't know who's driving it. Right, right, right. That's true. Right? It'll come up if it's stolen, and they'll tell you right away you're dealing with a stolen <clears throat> auto, and then you're going to handle it differently. But, uh, you know, ABC123 might be attached to Andrew Butcher, but um, his buddy uh, Joe Blow could be driving it who's wanted for armed robbery. That Andrew Butcher doesn't know anything about to just lent him his car to go pick up something like you don't know what you're dealing with, you really don't know what you're dealing with. It's a pretty scary job. Man, it's a scary job, man. And I think about you know I was a city cop, so you know I'm in I'm on streets, you know that are mostly people looking. And you activate roof lights, people look out their windows, and passing motorists look at it, you know. So you know people there's eyeballs on you. Yeah, man, I can't imagine these OPP guys out in the middle of, you know. Timmins are, you know, pulling over a vehicle where it's just bush all the way around them in pitch black. Oh, and yeah. And you're pulling some guy yeah, over yeah, and you yeah. don't have a clue. And they're one-man cars and they get out and they're walking up to the car in the pitch black with a flashlight. It's hard to believe yeah. they do the one-man car thing. It's all money, man. It's all bullshit. I guess, yeah, yeah of course. You know. Wow. You know, but, um, yeah. Um, it's, hmm. a, it's not a... I wouldn't recommend it... <laughs> I would have never recommend it as a job. I'm glad <laughs> neither one of my sons got involved with it. Um, it's an honorable profession. First responders of any type right. are honorable professions as far as I'm concerned. You know, And when you look at those cops that went to 9-11 and you look at those cops that go to these horrendous things happening, and they're all heroes in my book because you know what? It takes a special character to put not only your life on the line, but to um, sign up to put your life on the line. The same was in the military, you know, to actually go into combat for what? My country? Yeah. Okay. That's honorable. To me, that's more than honorable. That's unbelievable. And at the mm -hmm. end of the day, what you were doing uh, had nothing to do with the regular people. Those people, the civilians, uh, the citizens of the city, were uh, without... Knowing it, we're, we're, we're safe. We're safer as a and, result of what you were and, doing. Uh, or, I like to or think something, that, for sure. Something I like, like that. to think, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like to think that um, besides saying they were bad guys and I'm justified in what we did to them, I'd rather say we actually did take drug dealers off the streets. Yeah. 
Yeah. Our right. methods might have been a little bit different, but uh, we did do some good in the end. You know, um, did we maybe somewhere down the line we saved some kid's life? Who knows? It's entirely possible. Uh, you know, yeah. like, you don't know. But it'd be nice to know that, eh? That's whole butterfly. Yeah, it'd be beautiful to know because then I could shush away some of the demons that follow me around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, the sure. butterfly effect, that's what you're going to say? Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, you, know, it, Nobody you did knows, something right? to this guy and everything went out and Nobody out and out and ripples. But you know what? One of those guys that we chased away. Say one of those guys that we didn't deal with very nicely and he went away. What if he decided at that point, I'm not going to be, I'm not doing this anymore. What if it turned his life around? Maybe, maybe turned, turned it, out good. Interesting. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, who knows? Who knows? You know? Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just, um, I think it's the whole point of, of, of um, being, coming into a job that's honorable, being sworn into something that's, you're upholding the law. The law entails that you um, operate within certain rules. Um, breaking those rules kind of take you outside of that. They don't apply to me, and I'm something special. Um, and that's not a that's not a great feeling for me, you know. But by being assigned this by being assigned this detail, um, that's what they were basically pinning on us. All five of us. They were. They knew that they were gonna hurt us in the end. You know. Hmm. You know, and they didn't care. They didn't care, man. Did any of you get a carrot at the end of this, or did or did you all just? Well, if a carrot is going into a bureau, none of them ever got rank. Like none of us ever became like. Yeah, but I mean, I guess you don't even know what the other ones were promised at the end of the day. So, it stands to reason because you didn't they didn't uphold the promise they made you the, the you guys didn't must either. have had a chit chat about some stuff during your time together <clears throat> and uh and maybe talked about as to why these he's gone and you're or, on. or 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 yeah why you why me or anything you, you guys except it got to the point where we we're saying isn't this great we don't answer to anybody right we don't we don't go on parade we don't have to show up at the division at certain times. We don't have to do paperwork. We don't have to do any of this shit. Hmm. We do what we want. As long as you guys are getting the job done. Yeah. Now, what if you guys were never taken out of this detail? Would it just keep oh, going? We, we all knew it eventually it had to end. But if it didn't end, do you think that the power would just corrupt you? Uh, power. Lifelong? Powers. Oh, lifelong, like in my private life. Well, just uh, you know, I just I just think like when this ended, you might you obviously have your regrets. Um, but what? then I think about other people that are in power, perhaps the mayor or the chief or whatever, and they and they they're gonna they're gonna hold on to that as tight as they can until they retire uh, someday and then have those regrets yeah, believe or me something. This, believe me, this chief and this mayor went went high, high, high. Yeah, know, and uh, probably got that personality where they can dismiss everything out of their mind and say everything was just I was so good what I did you know mm. uh, you know and when you're ordering other people to do your shit I guess you can think that way well I didn't really do anything I just right. told other guys to do it yeah right <laughs> like know. you know th these people must think that they did something good or 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 how do you live you know with it uh, if, if you if you don't, I guess I'm if you sure. ever got this no. mayor, mayor on your podcast, you could ask them. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, the people at that level are so far removed from the street. Yeah, so far removed from the average copper in a car. True. Or you, you know, in jeans on a sidewalk, they're so far removed. Uh, they went to bed at night and slept well. Because Absolutely. Absolutely, Randy. Yeah, not a doubt in my mind. Not a doubt in my mind. I'm I'm just glad we're doing such a, a funny podcast. Yeah, this is hilarious. <laughs> this has been... Well, I, I don't think gold, I've man. had this serious of a face for two hours in my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy yeah. crap. Well, uh, you know, I guess that's the nature of the beast, but... Yeah. 
I wish I could say it was funny sometimes, but it wasn't even funny. You know, it wasn't even funny. No, man. I mean, I mean, as a patrolman, we used to have lots of yucks, you know, lots of laughs, you know, lots of uh, funny stories and stuff. But in this detail, we had none. Yeah. You know, we had none. You know? Well, it sounded like a pretty serious endeavor. Yeah. And, and, and scary, too. Well, I, I would think that your and lives are also yeah, on the scary. line. Yeah, absolutely. did you did you ever deal with a a, a major threat or anything during yeah, this time? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We had we had a guy draw down on us in his basement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Is that something you can talk about? Or not really. Copy that. Yeah. Roger. Not, not really. He answered your question. Not really. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. He did. Yeah. 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 Well, there you go. So, uh, your life. Was yeah. also threatened. We didn't have to kill him. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah, good. You know, but uh, yeah, Man. I mean, uh, yeah, and there, you know, there was collateral damage that went along with it too. That's the thing that bothers you a lot too is the collateral damage you know that went along with the shit too. Like other people that got in, involved because these people were involved with them, you know, and. You yeah, can imagine yeah, what I'm talking about. You know, you're breaking into somebody's house, and uh, and they have other, a spouse, and there's other people, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or children. Yeah. yeah, no children, thank God. Okay, good. Yeah, really. Okay, that's yeah. Yeah, no, no children. Hmm. Didn't have to deal with that. Wow. I think, I think, I think, I think a pair of the guys uh, when I wasn't on a certain day, they dealt with one that had a kid, but I didn't at any time have to deal with kids. Uh, spouse, on the hmm. other hand, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I'd love to talk about it, but I can't. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all yeah. good. So yeah, yeah. Wow, well, man, Jesus! Yeah, man. So you kind of left us all kind of quiet. Yeah, here. can we? <laughs> can, totally. we go, can we go back to hockey? Dark shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Um, well, no, I, you, you know, know what? To, to wrap it all up, guys, um, or to kind of put a bow on it, as they say, I'm not. I'm not, obviously, as you can tell, I'm not happy with uh, I'm not happy with my career the way it, the way it went. I didn't start off. I didn't get into it to 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 do what I did. But if it if it points out anything, it's that there is corruption and power everywhere, and they know how to turn. And the everyday individual every day into what, what they, they need what you they, to be doing. What they need. Yeah. Especially in a paramilitary situation like the police force where you're still saluting and yes or no, sir. Not, you know, ah, yeah. Very, a certain much, brotherhood. Much easier to have somebody do something when you're a commander in the military and the police than it is to have your boss at the office tell you to do something. Right. I never thought of it that way. There are paramilitary sort of thing the police force and they do salute and they mm -hmm. that's that's fascinating i never absolutely. thought about it that way absolutely you're a paramilitary it's not just a job it's not a job man well yeah you get a paycheck every two weeks that's where it's supposed to be. yeah i mean it's a job mm -hmm. but it's not like my job no and i can honestly say that any any of the coppers that i know uh on duty today or whatever really did get into it because they wanted to help people oh mm -hmm. sure yeah they really do and some of them do a lot of them have a lot of the similar things that you said you know yeah, yeah. that they didn't do much yeah. or that it wasn't effective or yeah. it wasn't what they thought yeah uh some regrets this and that um, i've had friends quit because uh, of the revolving door of the same guys that you know they arrest the same guy over and over and over and over mm -hmm. and they just yeah you know what am I doing? This is absolutely foolish. And then they went and got other jobs where they felt more mm -hmm. satisfied. Mm -hmm. And it's got a very high incidence of addiction in itself. Yeah. Um, and uh, a lot of uh, instance of, um, you know, um, domestic problems at home. Um, it's awful hard to be, um, it's awful hard to be the law for eight hours or 10 hours a day and then take your uniform and gun off and go home and have your wife uh, tell you you didn't shovel the driveway or something. You know, like and a lot of guys struggle with, um, listen, I'm right all the time. Right. You know, you listen to me. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, no. I heard that. I knew that. 
Um, it's a it's a, it's a hard crossover. Yeah, it's a hard, some guys struggle hard with it. You know, um, me on the other hand, I could hardly wait to get away from my shift and get home. You know, I took all my all my stat time and all my overtime and that in time off. I never took it in money because my time off was far more important to me than the money was, you know. But then there was guys that was just, they lived for that career, man. They lived for that. You couldn't wait to get back on patrol. Couldn't wait to get back into a fight. Couldn't wait to get back into an investigation. Well, and that in that. itself might be an addiction. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, yeah. I've got into guys' family cars. And I'm going, what the fuck is that you got on? He's got a police radio on in his car, wired into his stereo. I say, you don't get enough of that bullshit all day? Oh, no, I got to find out what's going on. Fuck, let me out. <laughs> Turn wow. that off. You know, there's guys that live and breathe it, man. Wow. But not everybody gets asked to do what we got asked to do. That's That's the... And that's the, I wish I wish I hadn't been working that you know <laughs> that shift. All of them made it probably found me anyway, but you know. Yeah, I mean, I imagine they were eyeballing you. They, oh, they, they, had, they had a feeling uh, about you from the moment they read yeah, hockey they, goalie. Yeah, yeah, they knew. They knew. No, they 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 did their work. They did their yeah. work because they had pretty much all five of us were kind of cut from the same cloth. Now, we we did things differently and took things a little bit more. Some took more things to extreme than others. But we we're basically the same cloth. If you put us in the room, we we're, you know, height and weight-wise, we were all the same. And, you know, um, there was no, uh, we we're all white. That that had to be scary watching them guys, those guys come down the street. We were all, we were all white yeah. guys. There was no ethnics involved. Um, do you, do you, what's the reason for that? Is it just because it's the 80s? Yeah. It was a time. They did not. Uh, that was before that you even had too many on the, on the See, police force. Yeah, this that brings up a whole other thing. You would never think mm -hmm. to have a woman involved in this either. Racial profiling. You know, a friend of mine, uh, a black stunt coordinator, mm. once said to me, what, what do you do when you get off work downtown Toronto at 2.30? Mm. And what do you do? I said, well, I walk to my car and go home. And he said, yeah, well, every time I get stopped. Mm -hmm. Because he's a single black guy downtown Toronto mm -hmm. at 2.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And somebody stops him. And I think that's disgusting. Now, see, I said earlier that I, I have never dealt with a problem. I might have been stopped 30 times on the road, but I've never, ish I've never had an issue with a cop. And uh, But I imagine that... Uh, that there are other people of different ethnic groups that would completely... I mean, they're listening to me going, well, yeah, you're just a tall, brown-haired, white guy. Mm -hmm. True enough. You know, what was it yeah, like I, at the you time? You know, I don't... I got mixed opinions on this racial profiling and stuff. You know, you have to do the job because, you know, there are certain, there are certain ethnic uh, groups that are more involved in certain things than others. Right. Um, and gang and activity and things of yeah, that nature. Sure. I mean, I mean you know. Um, but there's a reason for that shit, too. There's right? a reason for it, but the cop doesn't have that luxury to start sitting in his car and think about yeah, uh, the reason yeah, yeah. why he is this. You know, it's like, yeah, hey, I got to deal with him. What's he going to do to me? Or how's he going to react to me? You know, you can be on patrol, let's say, on a midnight shift at two o'clock in the morning in an industrial area. And have a van roll out from behind a, a warehouse, you know, with its lights off. And then it clicks it on as it gets to the road. And, you know, there's a white guy driving. Back in the 80s. I'm not talking about so much now. Back in the 80s, that would probably get you stopped. But there was probably in the cop's mind, he worked at the warehouse and was working late. Back in the 80s. 90s. You swapped that over with maybe a black guy or two black guys coming out in a van behind a, in the middle of the night with their lights off. Guaranteed, you're getting back up and you're getting out of your car with your gun drawn. And see, therein lies the prejudice. And then there lies the prejudice. However, my 
dear departed father always used to say, we had a saying, it went, uh, if you waddle like a duck and quack like a duck, chances are you're a duck. Right, but the two black guys in the van did nothing to they indicate they were ducks. nothing besides be black. Correct. Their brethren, who were lumped into this majority of so-called this type of crimes have laid the path for them. No, I understand. And but but there's gang violence among every ethnicity. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And we had a we had a black guy on my platoon back in the day and he'd tell you the same thing. I would have pulled over that those black guys in the van and I would have called for backup versus the white guy. Yeah. Who could have killed you just as easily? Sure. Right? But it's just the way it was. So do you think that the police are misunderstood in that regard? Or is it, or, you know, we're see, we see stuff all the time on, on TV about, you know, just race issues constantly. George Floyd's constantly. Knee on a neck. Yeah, like that. I mean, it's terrifying and terrible in every way, shape, and form. But, I mean, given statistics and things that you knew as a cop, yeah. I mean, I imagine cops today in like, some regard are misunderstood. Oh, I would, I would agree with you. Maybe I yeah, don't know. I would agree with you. Yeah, I would agree with you. And and looking at that cop, you know, with that Floyd guy, you know, I I just wonder what it was in that guy, that copper's head at the time. Um, for nine minutes, what for was nine in his minutes, fucking head? Uh, yeah. You know, if you did a psychiatric build up on this guy, was he afraid? Was he a? Was he a? Did he have a complex? You know. Is he afraid to get off his neck because he's because he's afraid that this guy's gonna because he can't fight? You know what, what was he thinking? You know, yeah. Um, Which I mean, he had but, three buddies I mean, with him. But here's a guy that I know wasn't trained very well. As soon as you got a guy prone on his stomach with handcuffs on, he is no threat to you. Yeah, he is no threat to you. All you got to do is kneel on the base of his back if you don't want him to get up. Mm-hmm. But he had two other cops laying on his legs. Yeah. You so could have just sat him up, lean him against the car. So, yeah, where is he going? Ha- hands kill. Hands kill. If if a guy's got a loose hand or two loose hands, he's a threat. As soon as you tie up his hands, nobody's a threat. Unless he can shoot a gun with his toes or stab you with his feet. Which, I mean, there's right. very few of those guys out there. You know. <laughs> I don't know of any. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, And that's got to do with training, too, okay? Some of those places in the States, they train these guys for two weeks, give them a gun, say, out you go. You know, like it's, it's ridiculous. Wow. Ridiculous. But I can see this cop rolling up. He gets the call. We got a six foot six black guy, 280 pounds, who just passed a bad check at a convenience store and he's yeah. now out on the street. So here's yellow buddy boy rolling up on this thing going, I'm terrified. I'm terrified. As soon as he gets his partners with him, he gets tough. You know, I see it all the time. Tough in numbers, you know, not so tough on your own. But to lay on his neck for eight, nine minutes, like. No, it's. It's, you get, you, you, it's obviously it's fucking just, crazy. It's just, yeah, he's not right. The guy's not right. Right. And no. he's where he belongs, okay? He's where he belongs. And there isn't a, probably another cop on this face of this earth that would say he's not where he belongs. Totally. I mean, we're not we're not trained to, to choke out people to death, affecting arrests. Right. You know, you just you just not. What are you What are your thoughts on um, Canada's banning assault style rifles and and, uh, and the moratorium handgun. on the sale of handguns and the importation mm-hmm. for law abiding citizens? Mm-hmm. The assault rifles, I kind of get. To me. An assault rifle has one purpose and one purpose only. And that's to kill human beings. As many as possible. As many as possible, as quickly as possible. Handgun, on the other hand, has different things. People target shoot with them. You know, people argue, oh, I could target shoot with an AR, you know, 47 or something. Nah, you, you don't, okay? Like, they're, they're military weapons, okay? Um... But for me, it's got to be across the board. If you're going to ban assault rifles, then you ban them from everybody. From everybody. Like including bad guys. Well, yeah, but you can't ban from bad guys. 
not talking about bad guys. That's what, we yeah, have a certain so, we have a certain ethnic group in Canada that's allowed to own assault rifles. That's correct. That's correct. And and well, who, who's this? What are you talking about? The native community can own. Oh, I see. A, oh, oh, I just didn't know because that. they say they can hunt with them. Right. Now I've never seen anybody hunt a gear, deer with it. A, AK-47, but um, apparently it's within their right. Maybe to, they're bad hunters. No. <laughs> bad shot. <laughs> but, Which we know they're not. But what I'm, saying is, what I'm saying is, if you're going to ban something, it's the same as the drug stuff, you know? If we're banning, if, if, if opioids are on the criminal code as illegal things to possess and to use outside of the medical confines... Then how can you debate having a place to use them to get high? And you've even gone so far as to debate giving them out <laughs> to people. Right. And they're illegal. Are they illegal or are they not illegal? Well, this this is it the point drugs are illegal, but they still have them. The fact that you write a, a bill and you sign your name on it. To say that this drug is illegal won't stop people from having them. By the same token, when the government bans handguns or, uh, and takes them away from law-abiding citizens mm -hmm. who are not committing crimes with these firearms, mm -hmm. you can sign that bill, but that doesn't take the handgun out of the bad guy. Right. So they're doing nothing no, about no, 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 no. gun crime by taking them out of the hands of law-abiding citizens, they are not. So what do you think they're doing? They must like they must know this. Is there a bigger do plan? They, do they? Do they? Yeah, true. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, do you when 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 everyone's sitting, you're going, oh, uh, they they got this in mind. Are they doing this? I don't know. Are they like what's the deal? Is Trudeau just fucking up left, right, and center, or does he have a different kind of agenda? Well, get me going on him. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, it might be another. Uh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll have you back. Podcast. We'll have you back. Yeah. Oblivious idiot. But anyway, they've got, it's like what I said earlier about the mayor in this city not knowing a, a kilogram of heroin from a ham sandwich. Right. And yet making the rules. Right. That and you've, and you've sat in their office and you, and you, you I shake get my head. that. Yeah, I shake you my get head. that. Okay. I shake my head. Hmm. It's like, do you, do you know what you're talking? Like, like read a little bit. You know what I mean? Like. So, but then there's there's uh, there's this mayor who's who doesn't uh, who doesn't have a fucking clue. But then there's another mayor who has such a clue that they have to hire a couple of hard cops to go do some yeah. some things. But again, Drew, we're talking about um, getting back to me and what I did back in the day. We're talking about probably a time in history where this would never repeat itself because um, you don't have to sell an area to business anymore okay business knows where they want to be and business knows That's strategically geographically economy uh, economically where they're situating their offices and where their headquarters are they don't need right some mayor handing out uh you know disney world pamphlets on bring your business here you know they've been able to suppress some of these uh uh what do you call it? Sort of segregate the, the right. crime in right. a way. Right. You're never going to repeat the 80s uh, in policing. You're never going to repeat it because so many things have changed. Number one and the biggest one is cell phones. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Cameras. Every, cameras. Right. I mean, everybody has got a camera. Everybody has a camera. Hence now is the reason why we know a lot about these other things that are happening. Police are wearing yeah, no, yeah, police no wear shit. body cameras now. Yeah. Shit, we didn't even have cameras in the interview rooms. There was not a camera. Once you set foot past the front desk, there wasn't a camera. Until you got locked up in prison, down in the holding cell, then there was one in case you committed suicide. Other than that, hmm. none, none. You did what you want, like on the streets? Nobody had cameras. I mean, it was rare to see a camera on a house back then. Now, never mind doorbell yeah, totally. cameras. <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. They're everywhere now, right? But it seems to me with the more technology you have and, the, and you'd think that things would calm down or crime would go the other way. It's the way that we, are, we look upon crime now. It's become so 
hap- like we're so used to seeing things that 20 years ago we would have been on the phone and the police would have been there right away and that person would have been taken away like like somebody injecting heroin on a park bench people walk right on by now yeah i've seen you know similar you've got, shot. you've got people here standing on traffic islands asking for money well, the Highway Traffic Act says to you, says you're not allowed to loiter on a traffic island. You're not allowed to be on traffic islands. So why aren't they moved hmm. along? Please drive right on by. Right on by. Is it because there's bigger issues or they just... They've been told to... Just let it go. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It's like we've become accustomed to... And the best way that I can put it is... When I was at University of Toronto, I had a professor who taught medieval history, but his specialty was the Roman Empire. And this guy was brilliant. He was world-renowned on the Roman Empire, and, and specifically the fall of the Roman Empire. And he used to say, he, he said to us as a, as a class, he said, anybody that thinks that the Roman Empire, Empire fell because somebody else became militarily more powerful and took them over, is is not accurate the roman empire crumbled from within politically morally fabrically crumbled from within until it was not until it was so weak that it enabled somebody else to take it over well that sounds familiar and then he said remember this statement and i remembered all of these years he says there is an inherent danger in a society that's made its peace with decline. Whoa. Yeah, man. Jeez. That's what we're doing here. Walking by addicts shooting up on our park benches. People stumbling around, shadow boxing or yelling at cars as they drive by. People following children or whatever. Like, we just become so numb to it all that it's almost become acceptable. And that's where our society is crumbling. And our police have everything to do with it as well. Well, you know, mental illness is not nice. It's not good for anything. No. Um, but we're not helping that either. No, we're not. You should lower your mic a little. Just so the camera can see your pretty beard. Oh, they know no, who I am. We're not, we're not. We're not. We're not. We don't have enough help out there. It's gotten away from us. Mental health has gotten away from us. Um, it's rampant. And we don't know how to do it. We don't know how to, there's no solving it, but we don't know how to deal with it. So the powers that be come up with these band-aid ideas. Well, let's open up and get high. Let's open up a site where we can watch them get high. That'll, that'll fix it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Know? <laughs> you know, let's make sure that they're alive because that's the big thing. We don't want them to take bad drugs. Where do you think you're, they're getting the drugs from? Are you supplying them? No. Yeah. Government supplied clean, good drugs. Yeah. Well, who's supplying them? Who's paying for that? Yeah, totally. Yeah. It, 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 it boggles the mind. It boggles the mind. But I don't know where we've, where we've got to as far as, like I said, um, the uh, way we, we just pass by things now and we, we take it as, oh, well, you know, same with politicians. Oh, he's corrupt? Well, we knew. They're all corrupt. You know, we, they're all corrupt. Well, don't they work for us? Don't, don't we pay... Didn't we vote them in? What do you but, mean they're all corrupt? But that's true, but what do we do about that? What do we do about it? And then we as a society become incredibly complacent to the fact that our politicians are corrupt. We know both sides. Yeah. And but, we just take who we feel in our hearts is the better side. Well, that's the thing is we really don't have choice. I mean, if you go to the convenience store, you got a hundred different candy bars. But if you came over to me and said, here's three different ones. Mm-hmm. That's my choice. Mm-hmm. It's not. I didn't get to go to the candy bar or the convenience store. I only it's get true. what you gave me, and that really is what's happened in our world. I mean, I you know I battle with the whole voting thing just only because it's it's one of these three candy bars that I just don't like. I don't like either one of these candy bars. How do I choose? Right. You know. Right. Um, yeah. No, it's, anyway. it's it's perplexing for sure. It is. Um, I don't have a solution for it. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what it is, but um, we're going to have to start as a society caring more. 
about one another and we're going to have to start yeah. um we're going to have to start um clamping down on on things that have gotten out of hand um, and i'm not talking about locking people up in prison but we got to do something um before our roman empire crumbles well the, the locking things up in prison people in prison it, um the law states this if they break it they should go i we have several friends who are um uh, prison guards mm-hmm. um, and the stories are incredible oh. Oh, yeah. that this person's just let go this person's let go um, these guys that just uh, yeah, the, the guy that in Saskatchewan that's right now they're going to the pro board why'd you let this guy go 100% you tried to stab somebody before yeah totally and you've got him down here as a, as a high risk to re-offend why'd right. you let him go yeah now we just killed 10 people yep oh that's all right yeah Uh, just, yeah. it's just mind-boggling. Now, is there, I mean, if, if somebody like that, they can't justify keeping him in prison uh, for his, uh, you know, his crime wasn't uh, big enough. Mm-hmm. So is there, I mean, what kind of middle ground could there possibly be? Is it somebody looking after these people, making sure nothing, uh, these 10 stabs can't happen? <laughs> you know, how, how, the, how the hell do you even prevent something like that? Some people are rehabilitated. You ban, you they ban knives, you know. Well, yeah. Uh, no, there ha- there has to be a there has to be a list of of offenses that are considered this side of the spectrum, and there's got to be ones that are considered this side of the spectrum. Well, that's interesting. You know I mean, I mean, there are people in prison to this day uh, because they had uh, twenty pounds of marijuana. Oh, listen, man, I think about and now the that guys, marijuana is legal, I but think, they let the criminal that, that let the violent guy out. That's yeah. another thing. I, I think about all the guys that I arrested for possession of marijuana. And I wonder, like, like what did, how did that affect them later on in life? Like if they were a teenager, say, or in their you know, early 20s. And well, they, they have a criminal record. And they can't, they they can't travel a, to the United have States. They have a criminal record. They can't, they can't get a gun. It affects job. their job. At this point, it a, should just be wiped. Can't get a cop. Become a cop. Can't be a firefighter. You can't work for the government. And can't. now it's legal, and you can buy it on an, almost any corner. No. Buy it on Amazon for Christ's sake. There you go. I'm buying yeah. some when I leave here. <laughs> that's, that's surprising, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. Once again, I'm shocked. <laughs> that's hilarious. Just but, saying, you know. But again, back to my spectrum sides. Marijuana has been put on a spectrum. It's been put this side of illegal drugs. Right. Is it habit forming? No. Can we prove that people high on marijuana are violent? No. People high on marijuana usually commit crimes, uh, other than passing out somewhere or something. Yeah, no. <laughs> and loitering. <laughs> loitering. These are the no, crimes I no, commit. <laughs> no, So it's been placed on this side, and somebody looked at it down the road and said, "Let's, you know, you might as well just make this legal." So they did. But how how can you how can you justify doing that with fentanyl, right? Or or, or or methamphetamine or, or, or oxycontin or, or, or you can't or, or that heroin. is insane you can't, yeah you know like to, it's just chalk and cheese it's the same back to handguns versus ak-47s the two different animals they both kill but they're on different sides of the spectrum you know they're, totally, they're totally different things they're the same but they're totally different you know um yeah Anyway, what are you gonna do? You live well, your life. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, Mark. I I don't know if we're totally closing up or nothing at this very moment, but um, before you do go, we want you to mm. sign the table. Oh, uh, look, however you want to do it. This, man. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool, eh? That's awesome. So far, so good. Um, we'll sign it before I leave. Yeah, yeah, just... Uh, come up with something brilliant? Yeah, that's, we yeah, want brilliance. It, yeah, give it some thought. And you don't have to sign... We always say you have the choice of the whole table, but everybody just signs there. Yeah. I assume because you're sitting there, but... Yeah, you know. Yeah, we want you to stay on camera when you do it. If you get up and come over to his side... <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, so pick your spot, whatever. I will. I will. You want me to do it now? Yeah, do uh, it. Uh, yeah, just uh, think about uh, what uh, you want to... All right. Yeah, yeah all give right. it some thought or whatever. All right, you know. all right. You can start talking about hockey again if you want. Uh, <laughs> and this is where we mention the people that are listening to the podcast as opposed to watching the podcast. That scratch noise is Mark signing our table. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
I think people are getting to know that. <laughs> Yeah, I like this. You're under arrest, <laughs> but, but it's but it's it's the yours uh, should have a posture there. E? there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you put the apostrophe in the wrong spot. Oh, I didn't. Listen, Mark. Uh, hey, well, yeah, you know what? I wasn't an English major. I, I like that better anyway. He was a history. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, man. Mark, thank you for coming down here. Yeah, brother. thanks for having us, guys. And. Yeah. Um, I just, like I said, I just want to reiterate for people that are listening and that, that uh, um, you know, the police aren't all bad. Okay? No. And, and even the guys that you think or have been written up as being bad, sometimes have been pushed there. Uh, just the same as um, uh, sometimes bad guys have been pushed where they've been pushed. You That's, know? I like that. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. And so... If we keep all everybody on that same spectrum, you know, there's good and bad and everything. That's but, just that's you know, the truth, man. Yeah, man. but uh, yeah. <laughs> but I think that uh, I think that most police are pretty good people. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. imagine so. Yeah, I agree. Most people are pretty good people. They don't want to ruin your life. They really don't. They really don't want to ruin your life. I know that if somebody got hurt just up the street and somebody's watching, they, most of the time these people come to the aid of yeah. somebody because people they are, want to help. People want to. People, people, people are, are good. People, people are, good. are generally good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, when we start getting away from people being good, then we get problems. So yeah, uh, let's officially say that uh, let's finish that golf game one day. Let's do it. Let's yeah, just, let's man. just start over. Let's start over. Yeah, same place too. I, think, I really want to go. I was. There. I think. I think I was beating you bad. Let's start over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Mark Fisher. Appreciate thanks it. for coming, man. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks, man. Drew. Okay, buddy. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Uh, got it, Deanna.